to you by SunWest Genetics. Seven minutes at this point. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's up, hotheads and political junkies? You're watching Cannabis Culture News Live. It's Jeremiah here with Mr. Cookie Man. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. What's going on? <laughs> Nothing. Been smoking weed all day and uh, seen Ed the Sock last night. Oh. Bring him back if you guys know. One of my heroes, Ed the Sock, is an amazing journalist. Yeah. He's, he just tells it how it is. Old school city TV, much music, and he's all over the place. Yeah, I haven't seen him for a while, though. No, next time he's, he's in town, we're going to have him come down on the show and fucking pop up. Shut up. Oh, did you talk to him? Oh, yeah. Oh, shut up. Absolutely. We have to have Ed the Sock on he's the show. He's friends with, yes. like, the family members yeah. and stuff. Bring him on. Yes. And so over in the hot seat, we have, uh, of course, Mr. Craig X there. Hola, hola. And also, Signe Knutson, who I don't think... Knutson. I'm not sure. We, we had right, you on the show... Well, I know we haven't had you as an official guest on the show before, no. but you may have popped on or been in the background. I, I, I showed, uh, I was here with CB Dawn. Oh, oh yes, yes, yeah. yes. That makes sense. Um, so hopefully everybody out there can hear you guys. Okay, yeah, you guys use your mic. Yeah, what's going on, y'all? Good to okay. see you. Yeah, sounds good. I got the chatters up here and Facebook at least in front of me. So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk to, well, first we should talk to, I guess Craig X is I'm the in guy who has to come in and go real quick. He just rushed over from his radio show over at Save On Radio. Tune in to Fridays at 2 on Fridays on SaveOnRadio.com. Yeah, that's the one there. Of course, Jeremiah Vandermeer was the first guest over there on the Save On Radio show that we had there. Appreciate you doing that. guest. I appreciate you having me. And this was, and Carly Marley was the guest as well, too, over episode 19. Right? Thank you for joining us. Appreciate that. We just did episode 21 today with Amanda Siebert, the best-selling author of The Little Book of Cannabis. And Amanda happens to be here in the room right now, actually. She's in the right. building. Right. She's in we're the actually, building. We're actually heading over to Studio 710 in just a couple minutes after I smoke this one and oh. drop by here to say, hey, make a few plugs, tell you how I've been, you know, la la la. What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me. Beautiful. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about a few of your ad- latest adventures. Mm, Vegas, probably. Yeah, because I know you just were in Vegas. Ooh. It's, it's like BizCon. There, I was down at BizCon. I was down at BizCon dark. for uh, lots of trade show booths. Lots and lots of booths. As many, as many booths as you have for 420 selling weed, mm. there was people selling products that weren't weed. <coughs> but they That's were, good. if you need weed in some months or you have some weed and need something to do with it, a lot of people in suits, no weed to be seen, not even any seeds, but lots of grow gear, lots of like packaging stuff. It's MJ BizCon, not just MJ right. Con. So it's, it's all it's about legit the business. Biz. Yeah, it's straight biz. A um, lot of booths, you know, well put together. The, the Tess Woods PR hooked us up with, with the passes and shit like that. We had the media passes to go through. I didn't do like a whole big montage video for this particular one, this particular time, because they're notorious about being able to what you can and can't uh, film on the, on the, on the floor. Uh, show floor. But yeah. actually, it turned out they gave us such a hookup, we could have filmed anything we wanted. Lame. But, well, you didn't know. But. Yeah, right. Next time we know. So, yeah. but what was what was really cool was running around and seeing all the different people we knew. I saw Sarah Sunday, one of the first people I ran into down there. Oh, good. Of course, Andy Williams from Medicine Man in Denver, the big huge dispensary down there. They, I ran into him talking to Jim Belushi, nice. talking to those guys down there because you nice. know Belushi's farms out in Oregon there as well Did you too. Interview? I didn't get an interview with Jim, but I gotta, I'm gonna try and get him on the show. I was thinking that because he apparently is saying some hilarious stuff. Like he's growing it himself. It's not. He's like other celebrities are endorsing weed grown by other people. He's like I grew this with my own hands. Well, nice. they got their own farm out there in Oregon. So great story to run into. Who else? Uh, John Sally. Holy fuck, is he tall? Oh yeah. John Sally's tall. There you go. Long, big tall. Uh, ran to Burner again as well too. So a uh, nice. bunch of different homies, bunch of people we know from the industry and stuff like that. Lots of good folks down there. And of course, then uh, I did my show on Thursday from the Emerald Cup. Had a hospitality house because they got their big event coming up in two weeks. So they had the, the event over there, and I was uh, chilling with the folks from GG Strains. You know the Gorilla Glue, or formerly known as Gorilla Glue. Um, uh, Josie Wales and Lone Wadi were on the show, and they hooked me up with a bunch of the GG4 and the new glue and the, the GG1, the sister glue, as well as a new shit called Glue Chi. Holy fuck, nice. that shit gets you. Uh, TGA Will was there from Subcool Seeds as well, too. Cough from High Times. It was, it was a good show. And then nice. um, uh, Fridays as well, too. Ticking away. That's always going crazy and stuff. But uh, Expert Joids Live, episode 130, 155 is coming up next week. Unity Margarita on there. You know me. I, I Always working, bro. It just never stops. Awesome. I'm going back to... Uh, California in two weeks for the Emerald Cup as well too to cover that. Not only make the cool montages that we do there, but apparently the organizers would like us to do some of the interviews with some of the winners and some of the folks behind the scenes. And nice. Willie Nelson is getting a Lifetime Achievement Award, so maybe we'll yeah, get the interview with Willie. Maybe. Oh, Willie I'm going to smoke weed with Willie. 
Yeah, well, very cool. And how is it? I wanted to ask you, Craig. Yep. In Las Vegas, the, like the weed scene itself, not the, the expo and the trade like, show and all that. If we shit, went but to like, get weed, the actual yeah, the because we were going to go, but we decided on. Okay, so here's the yeah, deal. They got lots of. Myself. They got lots. Like the, the fucking. There's dispensaries everywhere. Lots of them. Lots Good. of big billboards for dispensaries. Yeah. The cabs are fucking all covered in cannabis and medman. Like they've got branding all like over the taxi everywhere. Everywhere, 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 everywhere. Nice. Really? But do not smoke your weed anywhere on casino property. No. They will come over. You'd be in the furthest reaches of the fucking Dude, distance. Like, and no, some casino. and some annoying little fucking portly fellow from the fucking valet will come out to you and say, hey, you can't smoke fucking dope here. And yeah. they say, don't call it dope. I'm medicating so I don't have a fucking anxiety attack and Until throw up all over our, your room. Until we have our weed casino down. Right. There. Well, here's the thing. Well, yeah, you're going to need that because the casinos don't really back it. Casinos run Vegas, and casinos, casinos don't back it because they want that drunk. Person they want they there. want the drunk person, <laughs> exactly. or they or what they would like to do is they would like to put crystal meth in vending machines and keep you up and fucking Just gambling into for, the days, air. for days, for days, for days, for days, for days. Yeah, they They're don't going want to Vegas you. didn't sleep. I don't know. Right? No, they do yeah. not want you to fucking smoke a joint and go uh, eat some fucking pizza and watch a movie in your hotel room. No, they don't want that. No. So the. And the, you don't want that either when you're in Vegas. Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> so the, uh, well, I do. I like to smoke weed wherever I go. <laughs> yeah. I like to smoke weed wherever I go. And I like to try so pizza from yeah. around the world. So, so <laughs> to that effect, right? To that effect, the culture there is not super strong amongst like the, there's not lounges. They don't really, the, the only place you're allowed to smoke cannabis in Las Vegas is in a private residence right. or on private property. Like basically. I thought they were working room, on guess, lounges but. though. Aren't lounges I think they're probably in the works, I yeah. Think that but it is going to happen. I've heard mm. the rumblings, and I'm not sure actually. That's not. Don't quote me on that. So, so, yeah, it's quoted. Right, tweeted. It was, it, it, was, it was cool. It was all right. You know, I had, I had a decent time there. It was like 46 hours or something. You know, me, I dip in, dip out, and shit like that. It was, it was cool. It was, it was better than the Vegas trip I had done in 2002 for the boring ass fucking trade show that I had to go to. No. Ugh. Yeah, no, it was good. But you know, cool. we doing it. And then got back to Studio 710, smoked some weed. You know, we made some commercials, debuted some shit as well too. I got to get out of here in a couple minutes. But I hear you're gonna play the Dude. Koalas uh, Puss video from High Score. We Maybe are, I believe we have um, your commercial. Oh, the eight bit. The little eight bit. One. <laughs> eight bit X. Ah, uh, yes. Both. Yeah. He's got both back to back. Let's do it. Run on the boards. Well, you guys do that. Captain Thanks to Anil. Anil. Thanks to you guys. For- I can email so that, you that over. That was the commercial twice, but yeah, that yeah the, good one. The link to the Long video rip. is the koala. It's on yeah. your page. Where go to like expertjoints.com. Go expert to the main joints. page on there, <laughs> and you will find on the bottom right hand corner of the opening little little selector thing. You can't miss it. It's koala puffs at high score. It's the out and about, and it's dope. That was a cool. It was yep. nice to have her Eight there, the and it was cool to have the little party and everything. Yeah, man, it was, was great. Thank cool. you so much for having us. Yeah, it was awesome, man. Right there, out and about. At high score. And if you haven't yep. been to high score there. yet, you should come by. Get down there. Get the high score. 649 mm-hmm. East Hastings Street. We're in a free joint. High you score like lounge on Twitter and video Instagram. video games, and you like smoking the herb. Yep. And then, so yeah, of course, KP was down there. We had the big old meet and greet down there. We had all of the good times down there. Uh, line up out the day. She just did one at Vapor Central in Toronto on Wednesday. Dabber man dropping her products off, your hemp giving away papers and shit. Apparently it was lined up from, you know, Vapor Central, from the front of the room oh, by yeah. the stage all the way to the back to the bar <laughs> yeah, for like three and a half hours, man. She kills it. Yeah, or on... Uh Favorite Central. Awesome. Girlfriends got pulled, man. Straight up. Girlfriends got pulled. So shouts to KP. Shouts to everybody for doing it. And shouts to you guys for having me here. I'm going back to Studio 710. Yeah, watch this video. Go to we, High Score. We will. And we'll see you Thursday. Yep. Yeah, check out Craig X on Expert Joints every Thursday on Pod TV, starting at 420. That's right. And you can also listen to him on Save On Radio's website. Save On. What is it? Save On. Dot, Save On Radio. Save on radio. Com. That's the place. And that's his Friday show. Yes. Tune in to Fridays at 2 on Fridays on Save on Radio. There you go. Later.
Hey, what's up? Craig X here inside High Score with the one and only Koala Puffs all the way up here from LA, hanging out with us in Vancouver. How are you? I'm turned up. Yeah, you are. She's one unbelievable character, I tell you what. Everything you see on the Instagram is real. Is everybody having fun? <laughs> Am I still here? I'm so dabbed out, I don't even know. All right, uh, I'm gonna be walking around handing out a box of free stuff. Let's turn the music back up, let's have a great time. Koala Puffs here with Craig X at High Score Cannabis Life Network. Make sure you follow her Koala.Puffs with two S's everywhere. Support two S's. Thing. Craig X, Koala Puffs here at Cannabis Life Network. Thanks Bye. For yes. Craig X is out of the building. Out of the building. Yeah. And that was a cool little, uh, little video about the High Score event. That was awesome. Um, and Carly Marley just popped into the hot seat. She popped as well. in. Hello, hello. And she's there with Signey. Um, and now Carly also. I'm so sorry, Signey. These guys keep popping in, and they're like, we'll pop hey, in. no problem. I, oh, I'm popping in. I'm chill. Ahead of time. Yeah, I know, I know. You silly. But Carly, what is it that you are so uh, wanting to show us today? Well, I wanted to talk about a couple things. One, I wanted to remind everybody that our Christmas collections are up on CannabisCultureHQ.com. <laughs> so you can go and find stoner stocking stuffing, stoner yeah. stocking stuffers. Uh, stoner and, stocking <laughs> stuffers. <laughs> uh, everything in the stocking section, stocking stuffer <laughs> section <laughs> is 20% off right now. So you can get lots the of good stuffed deals. stuffed stocking. There's a lot of stuff in there. There's like a lot of the stuff in there is like tools and stuff that you really need anyways. So even if you're not really big into the holidays, yeah, and you need want to get some dab tools Garb cheaper caps. than you usually do, there's like some good stuff in there. And uh, also gift ideas to make your holiday shopping a little easier. So make sure that you're checking those out on CannabisCultureHQ.com. Uh, and also I wanted to just quickly mention something I'm really excited about and maybe get some of your viewers excited about it too. We're doing a little like staff photo shoot this weekend and I'm really excited oh. about uh, all of that and we've got a lot of really exciting fun things planned that we're putting together so we can you know help share a hashy holiday spirit with you guys and you know make sure the stone community is well represented throughout this time of year too because sometimes we're a little forgotten about christmas stoners yeah you know christmas everybody just makes stoners. everything so family friendly that there there's not enough people yeah, smoking yeah, joints and santa hats thanks for remembering the stoners right? carly you're welcome oh it's just 420 it's oh, still right now oh, it's 420. 422 Happy so that counts oh. Well, we an extra two. I'm gonna fucking rip the hash bong. Do it. Got some fine bubs. Neil, thank you for the reminder. And it's 422. Repurposed to salt cool. spoon here oh. from the. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Cookie's got the gadgets from the antique. What do you have there, Carly? Um, well, we have it out, so like a real amazing and hilarious too. props, and I had to buy this one and show it off. And, and Neil really likes it too, so he's probably going to be I a character wanna... you'll see on oh, Paw yeah. TV from time to time. But look, they gave him candy cane eyes. Here, but come on, let's be realistic. Who is this that mofo? That just looks like he's fucking stoned. Those stoned look like ass bloodshot ass. eyes. <laughs> he is the stone little snowman. We can't. We're trying to figure out the perfect name for a stone he snowman. Sure does look stoned. Some oh, sort of wordplay off Frosty the snowman. Man, of course, yeah, but yeah. you let us know in the Christmas comment section yeah. what you guys think. Yeah, little, uh, it looks big almost when it's on cam, but it's actually really tiny. Yeah, and then actually I had something else to show off that I was given at very generous pricing with and yeah. uh, from one of our really good friends, and we now have these to use in studio as well. Check candy out canes. these dab tools, guys. No way. Yeah, I got those for Christmas, the candy cane dabbers. I got what? to. I couldn't do a dab photo shoot for Christmas without candy cane dabbers. And Miko BH Glass really hooked it up. He gave me really good prices because he's always got really great prices on really amazing glass. So shout outs to Nico BH Glass. Yeah, Nico. And I'm Too super smoke. excited, <laughs> and I hope you guys are excited nice. to see some of the fun, creative things that we come up with, and tune into the 420 Lifestyle show this Monday, and so I wasn't there this week. I've been really busy, but I mm. heard it was a very fun, hilarious, trippy show, so I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I love you. Carly's been busting her hump. Busting at Christmas <laughs> styles. Yeah. Busting it, yeah. Uh, I really love work, and I really Think love the holidays, that. so I'm just like going really hard on both of them You're this year. Work a Christmas-aholic. <laughs> 
like every Thank time you. you throw in a vent, it's just like, oh, it's so much fun. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. You're That's welcome. something yes. I, I worked towards. All right. I'll Harley let, does an I'll let you have the job around here. She's the manager of our online store, CannabisCultureHQ.com. So go to CannabisCultureHQ.com and get all kinds of goodies there for Christmas. Get them now, though, because you need time before, if they're going to arrive before Christmas time. Yeah. 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 Every, it's any, getting close. And this isn't just our website. This is anything that is pop paraphernalia. If you don't have a head shop near you to go pop by and you're planning on shopping online, order get ahead of time it. because it's like it's everywhere. A, there's a backlog, in there's the a backlog right from every wholesaler because all the wholesalers have a bunch of new stores that they're supplying to. And everybody, it's funny because there's been so many people who've smoked weed for so long. And now all of a sudden people are like, I don't know, I guess they're less scared to have bongs in their houses. Maybe well, they've the got stores, apartments and they're scared. Like there's like stuff. grocery stores that have now a little section of like yeah. bongs and papes. You're like, really? All right, I'll grab some milk cookies. <laughs> Give me some zigzags. Oh, I, won't, I won't name names yet, place. but I know that there are Name-names. wholesalers that we get a lot of our supplies from that are, have been talking with like Walmart yeah. and London Drugs and stuff like that. So it ha- definitely has an impact on the small companies. And if you want to make some of those purchases this holiday season, try to support us because we put all of that money back into activism. And it really means a lot to us when you're able to support our online store. And we love you. And we want to make sure that you guys have a very hashy holiday filled with all the stoner, delightful things that you need. So hit us up on CanvasCultureHQ.com. I love you. That's it for me. This week. There you go. Carly Marley. And you can watch Carly Marley every Monday night at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. On pot.tv, the 420 lifestyle with Carly Marley and BC Bud Gal. Do we need a dab tool? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just don't let me think it's candy cane and actually bite it. Bite on it. Tooth yeah. broken. That would probably take your teeth out. But yeah. it looks like a real candy cane. It does. Oh, yeah. And it's in the Hanging up on the tree. Glass. Glass. He's got him in the plastic. Yeah. So we should do a dab with these. We can, can I open it then? I'm gonna, yeah, I just okay. wanted to, I was going to leave one in the wrapper, but I feel like because they're for pictures, unless you see us dabbing, you don't know they're dab tools, so. Yeah, right. yeah you just think it's a candy cane. Glass. Yeah, we should open them up. Otherwise, yeah. we buy candy canes. <laughs> they are, there. it's very cool. It looks exactly like a candy cane. It even yeah, feels exactly it. like oh, yeah. a candy cane. Yeah, you cane. have to put a warning on it. Except it's know, sharp. You got the point at the bottom, it looks like when you've been sucking on the candy cane yeah. at the bottom yeah. for a little while and it gets all pointy. <laughs> Very yeah, cool. I would I would pick that up. Well, thanks, Carly Marley. You're welcome. Just leave them. You don't need to leave all three of them. We only okay. really need one or two, maybe. Okay. Or you can even. I think one will do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's this one's cool. It's a mini one. <laughs> um. So very cool. So and now, Signy, we yeah. have uh, so interesting ho, ho. stuff. More interesting stuff to talk about with you. And sure. I have in front of me here. I think Posters. The folks at home can see this here. Boom. Dun, 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 dun. The longest night blacklight. Art party on December 21st, 2018, just before Christmas here at High Score. That's 649 East Hastings Street in Vancouver. And what and entails in a black light party? Yeah, what? tell us what this is exactly. Well, um, I've been using uh, black light sensitive paint, phosphorescent paint and, and neon paint and, and uh, creating works of art that can be seen in the dark. And... Uh, so it's really fun, and one of the one of the great effects that this has is that our studio is the same room as our bedroom. So we paint, and paint, and then turn out the lights, and everything glows. It's like there's night lights everywhere. So these these paintings kind of double as a little night light for a little while too. So uh, the black light exhibit, we will have some black light bulbs, and um, just uh, the paintings where the black light bulbs are. Nice. That's very mm-hmm. cool. And you guys just did a blacklight art show not too long ago here in Vancouver that was very cool. I was mm-hmm. really impressed to see some of the uh, stuff that was there, and it was Bob High's art. Yeah. Um, and But, man, does it in that setting, it's sure cool to see it just jump off the page like that. Yeah, you, you, you know, every, everybody has seen a blacklight poster at one time or another, but to have, like, real uh, whole large works of art uh, that that glow in the dark it's, it's, it's fun and and you can paint things like in nature that are phosphorescent right yeah. it's like uh, these mushrooms, mushrooms right uh, and yeah. uh, when you have them under black light they just they totally glow in the dark so that's very cool yeah and um, and it's a special so, kind of paint right 
Yeah, yeah. It, just neon or uh, the the glow in the dark is phosphorescent has phosphorus in it. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like my shoes and my oh. shoes are phosphorescent. Yeah, because you see stuff that's just like normal that br- is brightened up like that, and you didn't even like I wouldn't have known you should have been able to make that go bright. Like mm-hmm. Cookie, when you bought those shoes, did you know that it was like that? I, w- I was hoping it was because the inside's like this and then oh, yeah. the, the back side's like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, for sure. Glow in the dark shoes, man. But that under the black light goes. Bzzz. Oh, yeah, it's so <sighs> thing. I yeah. just got a new pair that's all like that color on the top. It's so colorful. Very cool. With an orange heel and a. Yeah. And so um, this is going to be essentially how does it work? People can just come in and hang out, check out the art. Is art for sale? Yeah, there's going to be or art for sale. Um, one thing with the black light art is that it is um, only the originals glow. So you can get a print of something. And that actually, that print is pretty good because it's a picture of it glowing. It is right? pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like it's almost glowing. Yeah. But yeah, it, w- it looks like there's a light on it. Well, the picture yeah. is taken like that, but right now we can pretend there's a light on it. Yeah, actually, there, <laughs> there wasn't a light on it. That's, that's it glowing under its own uh, light. Nice. Wow. In the picture. That's its, cool. that's its own bioluminescence. Not bioluminescence, not alive. But if it was the mushroom, it would be. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very cool. But yeah, we're uh, going to have you know some, some party snacks there. And of course, High Score <sighs> Lounge is a 420 friendly oh. location. <laughs> so we can celebrate the solstice, you know, in, in uh, fine BC style. Oh, yeah, 21st. Yeah. So tell people a little bit about you and your art. <laughs> sure. Um, well, I've been doing portraits for about 20 years and uh, then um, met David Malmo Levine a while back and uh, drew a bud, you know, because I've been doing botanical drawings too as a herbalist. So I drew a bud for his Pot Shots magazine. And so that was kind of the, the first time that those two, like the portraiture and, and my other art kind of came to, 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 you know, to a place together. And yeah. uh, then I guess I'm influenced by like Alan Sayers yeah. and his portraits. And he has like a quote and then a portrait. So I totally stole his format. But he's okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's seen them. He likes them. So Yeah, I love Alan's stuff. Yes. Yeah, and, and your stuff is very different. It, I think it's different than his. I mean. It, oh yeah. 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 But yeah, your stuff's very beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, and you've done some amazing stuff. So you got. Yeah. A, what, what do you got there? This, I just Whoa. got these yesterday. Um, this is my coloring book. Oh nice. That. You should um, hold over this way a little bit more. Sure. Too. I'll put the mic down and just turn yeah. some pages. There we go. There yeah. So it's a drawing of a drawing of Carly. Being colored, a drawing of, of a drawing being colored. That's very cool. There we go. Carly, right, because you painted or you colored or I guess it's yeah, painted. I painted. Well, the, you have the the painting. Yeah, the painting of. And the, then here is the black and white here. Actually, me and me and Carly kind of share nice. a spread there, which very is yeah, it's cool. kind of it's kind of like when we were sitting here, except she was here <laughs> and right. I was here. But in this one, I'm there and yeah. she's yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> For the next color. Oh, they look amazing, though. Thanks. Very cool. And I, I, what I want to do, and what I think I'll start right now, uh, is just on my Facebook page, uh, Psychoactivist Studios. Um, page. People are starting to have these books in their hands. And uh, when you color a page, just upload a photo of the page, and then we can all compare. Like oh, nice. all, yeah. all the people who have That's like cool the, here's idea. here's brother Great Leroy one. Campbell right. That's awesome. And like all the different ways people uh, color Doctor Leroy, brother Leroy. That's awesome. And Jan, and then some are really simple, so you can do kind of a, a quick. If you're feeling like you don't want to put too much into it, you can just kind of okay, I'm going to color this green, and it's done. Or uh, and then some that you could spend hours on, like hours and days, like. Nice. These two pages, it almost looks like uh, these are two different pictures, but it turned out like watermelon is sort of like in this field with this. I love it. Cat. Oh, yeah, the plants are different. <laughs> you can't really tell, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're two different plants. That's awesome. Yeah, there's watermelon. And a little deer. That's a great one. It's this, this is a calf, and in Holland, in the Netherlands, they're grazing cattle in hemp fields. Yeah, wow. The good you know, meat. That is so cool. Weed goo. Mm. That's amazing. 
amazing. Imagine all the CBD those guys are getting, just mm. like walking through and just rubbing their... It's so <laughs> chill. Yeah. It's very cool. It's weed goo. So I wanted oh. to... Um, this is another good spread here with... Uh, and and Genovi and, 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 uh, and Dana and Dana. That's awesome. Yeah. Some of your pot TV favorites. Yeah, that's right. And I kind of wanted to just like, you know, some some people like like Dana's got a huge profile. Yeah. Right. You know, we all we we love Dana. He's awesome. Yes. You know, he he has uh, you know. I, I don't know how many plants are growing out there because of Dana. No kidding. Millions. <laughs> yeah, Dana is right? quite well known. He gets a lot of credit. Yeah. And but people like Anne, you know, don't get as well. They they aren't really. Uh, you you might not know her name anything. if you didn't live around here. You yeah, know exactly. You know, but she's yeah. she's TV, so our, important. Our crew she's always because she's yeah. always on the shows. But, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but we she, love Anne. Yeah, yeah, and and she's just she's always there, just you know, working and. Uh, behind the scenes she's just and she's just a wise woman you know so she is <laughs> oh <laughs> your dabs aren't working yeah but that's very cool i know and i, I think jerry there yeah there's there's jerry G. martin and this is kind of fun you, you got compassion. grinspoon and martin very cool. Grinspoon and Martin. Grinspoon and Martin. I think that would be a good band name. It's, yeah, right? it could. It sounds like it could be an old radio or show. Martin and Grinspoon. Martin and Grinspoon. Yeah. Either way, <laughs> really. Comedy duo, yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, comedy duo. So these, each one has a quote by the the person who said it. So here, I'll read you Grinspoon and then I'll read cool. you uh, Jerry Martin. And because I don't know, they're they're just both so cool. Yeah, let's okay. hear it. Let's hear it. Uh, uh, Doctor Lester to Grinspoon from the Harvard Medical School said, marijuana is a wonder drug because it is remarkably non-toxic, on a par with coffee with respect to both dependence and toxicity. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yep. Mm -hmm. Safe stuff. Yeah, so that's, that's from the mouth of, of the doctor. And uh, can you hear me with the mic? Am I close yeah, enough? Yeah, they should Good. be able to hear you. Okay. And this is Jerry Martin, who is facing jail time for his dispensary in Saskatchewan and, and now uh, they have legal dispensaries in Saskatchewan yeah he's so doing far. he was ahead of the curve he was providing medicine where it was needed when it was needed and also donating significant amounts of his own Helping his little town profit like crazy. to people yeah. in the town. He's he's uh, never never been holding back anything for anybody who needed it, right? I think so he put a new roof on the pool. He's or uh, I can't remember one of the things. I was like, shit. Yeah, yeah. He's he's um, yeah. He's facing a, you know I don't know what did he say seventy years. Yeah, it's a long. <laughs> it's a long. He's facing a long sentence anyway. It's and insane for weed. Like it's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So Jerry's in here, and uh, his his quote is, "Give without expectation, and you will open the door to your soul." Yeah. So somebody's banging. Banging hard out there. <laughs> banging hard. <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on? <laughs> Fucking the slow construction bang. Construction on the building we didn't know about. Mm. Um, Unauthorized. Well, that's very cool. That's awesome. And I saw, I saw Jody in there, too. Didn't yeah, you? here's Jody. Jape. And Jody is right next to this just um, where it, I, it's like the flower of life, you know, uh, and then the, 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 the pot leaf. Weed, just, man. you know, it's it. That is it so fits, cool. you know, it turns into that. I and love so that. There, there's, there's the flower of leaf, the flower of leaf, the flower of <laughs> life. The flower of leaf, it's both. It is. Leaf and love. Leaf and Leaf, life, life, and love. Life. That's the other yeah. one. Yes, all of Power. it. Power. <laughs> yeah. So this would be really fun to color. And what I find with the uh, geometrical ones, especially Flower when you're stoned Power. and you color them, yeah, like they can almost make you stoner. Uh, yeah. Like oh yeah, it so trips sure. you out because you're you know. Yeah. And then when it, when you're done, yeah, like I, I trip out constantly when I'm painting. Like doing these last night. Just You're like every every time, because I draw it without the black light on, and then I'd stop and put it under the black light and take a look. Did you just do that last night? Yeah. Oh what? Yeah. Well, Pumping them on. Got on the post pretty quick. Yeah. Where'd you get that poster <laughs> made? That was a quick turnaround. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I know. I'm work with those guys. Um, yeah. Digitech. Yeah. Digitech, Digitech. down Digitech. on. On Damn. Pender. Pender in Very Maine. Nice. No. Uh, I Pender and. Um, uh, Granville. Pender uh, and Granville. Yes. Granville. Just. 
back there. Yeah, Beautiful. yeah, they're great printers. Though they had it, they we sent, we sent the files this morning. They had it done by three. There you go. Yeah, well, yeah, those cool guys. Stuff. Oh, yeah, you just picked out. it up and came here because it's only four thirty right now. I just picked them up, came here. You guys are the first ones with these posters. Cool. Fresh yeah. off the press, as they say. And so, are it's we true. selling these downstairs? Hot. These uh, books? these coloring books. Yeah, where can I haven't taken them sale? into the shop yet, but oh, I will. Okay. But oh. yeah, anybody who wants one <laughs> or ten, can they find them online or something? Uh, just great Christmas message present. Message me myself or at Psychoactivist Studios. Psychoactivist on, Studios. Uh, Facebook, my page there. Okay, Psychoactivist um, Studios on Facebook, and they can just message you through that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I take uh, PayPal. There you go. Mm-hmm. And what are they worth? They are, because uh, most of them uh, I have to send somewhere. I'm getting a lot of orders. So I just say 25 bucks. It includes the shipping. There's no tax. And I'll send you a signed copy. And I would like one of those. All right. Oh, you got one, Jerry. Yeah. You're in here, too. Um, oh, yeah. Show us. Hold on. Show us. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? Where is he? Oh no, they missed you. <laughs> <laughs> no, this isn't funny. They <laughs> forgot little old me. I think you mentioned that I was going to be in it, but I don't remember if I've seen it or not. Well, there you are. Ah, oh, there, there you I are. are. That's right, that picture. You I got love the that. inside back page. I love it. Very right. nice. There we and go. Next to Bob Hyde. Right Bob next Hyde. to Bob Hyde. Wow, I'm honored. Yeah, you and Bob. That's amazing. Wearing his cannabis day shirt, which is technically his birthday too. That yeah, is there my we cannabis go. It's day. Your birthday yeah, and I'm shirt. blowing smoke at the cam. Yeah. yeah, it's a good one. I love it. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I'm so honored to be in it. Yeah. Thank you very much for putting me in there. And Should I read your quote here? Sure. Yeah. Okay. It says, "Okay, Jer says, Canada should end marijuana arrests and give pardons immediately. What is the purpose of wasting more tax dollars to ruin lives? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. They should." True. We need all of the illicit cannabis to be licit cannabis. Licit. Licit. There's no shortage here. And licit no. hash, too. Yeah, there's no shortage of weed in BC. There's, the no, media is talking about this. This is what a weed shortage, shortage looks like. I there's always no laugh. Yeah, this is what a weed shortage. The store in was probably overstocked now. They're probably <laughs> yeah. all getting rid of it. Yeah, because <laughs> it's such garbage. They're like, no. Uh, it's all right. The legal Pretend weed. Trust us, guys. You don't want the legal weed anyways right now because it ain't no good. It's not very good at all. At least the stuff we've No, I got a couple yeah. orders going to uh, my family's place in Ontario from the Ontario store. Just try that out. Mm-hmm. Mm. See how it is. Mm. Yeah, make sure they they don't smoke it if it's moldy or has bugs in it. Well, yeah, which, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, very cool. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and showing off the cool stuff. Yeah. And uh, so this... It's on December 21st from 6 till 11. We have the Blacklight Art Party, the longest night Blacklight Art Party at a high score at 649 East Hastings in Vancouver. So when you come to check out the art, you can stay and play all the video games, vintage games and such, and Maybe hit the like, dab bar. It makes it more authentic with the black lights up. It's like back in the day when they had the arcades with the black lights and stuff. Yeah. The guy is selling hash in the corner on like a little strips. Yeah, well, except we, now it's not in the corner. It's like right over the counter. It's right over the counter. Yeah, it's legit. Yeah, you don't have to go to the corner or back, you know, out the back door. No. Know? And I got to say, I was there last night at High Score, and they've they've made the place, uh, Alyssa, who's in charge over there, the manager of High Score, has made the place look absolutely amazing. It's just glowing beautifully. I love it. Um, yeah, come down and check it all out. Come down and trip out on the glow cubes. Get the high score. <laughs> Get the high score on Galaga if you can beat my score. Actually, somebody came down and beat my score by a lot. Whoa. Somebody came down and beat my score by like We're going to bring in a ringer points. to try to, yeah, to, try to beat it. Uh, no, my high score was, I think mine was uh, Not high enough, 300,000. 300, and this guy got 900,000. Almost a million. <laughs> Was he playing for like the whole day? No. I want to see him play too. He's like, can you get me a bench? Because I want to make sure he didn't cheat because you can, there's a certain thing you can do at Galaga. Apparently, Kirk Tussaud told me this. That Kirk you can, and then I looked it up on YouTube and it's true. You can like do some maneuver where you can cheat and make it so the guys <laughs> the don't maneuver. shoot bullets at you. 
Oh. Yeah, and then you can just launch through. But I've never actually tried it or successfully. Look, I'd like to try you that. You tried to execute Do it. Do it on the ferry. Yeah. Kill the whole ferry ride. And you're just like, they're like, we're departing now. And you're like, okay, landing. You're like, yeah. But I guess if you can do it in the game, it's not really cheating. But it well, still it's seems like kind of like hack. it's like yeah, the it's, bas- a hack. it's a hack. It's like the basketball one with the three pointer from the corner or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ding 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 ding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What game was that? And you just like rack up the points so huge. I can't like basketball, but I don't remember which one it was called. <laughs> Jordan versus Bird. No, just like <laughs> a random one. Like, you know. MMA. I had Dr. J versus Larry Bird, I think. No. Remember that? Yep. On Commodore 64. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like... And then and a little block. It was like another <laughs> picture of the net. You're like... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could even... You could break the backboard in that one. It was like... <laughs> it would come down if you really dunked. Yeah. Ching, yeah. Ching, ching, ching. yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, yeah. Do that now. I, unfortunately, my videos. phone died, so I can't see the chat. Oh, we got both our chats up there. Right there. Nice. We're seeing them. Oh, well, hi to the chatters out there. Both up top, down They'd top. They love an arcade in Boston like that. Oh, I saw somebody Everywhere. earlier um, asking a question. What the heck was it? Oh, it was about Buds and Tippy. Where did Buds and Tippy go? They're good. And, and Neil They're said they, they got their own place now. Yeah, which is true. They did move out. Yeah. They, but they are shacking up with Marijuana Man. Yeah, Aww. so they're roommates now with Double M. They paid them rent for like two years in advance or something. There you go. As like security deposit. Well, stuff, they had so. huge salaries here at Pod TV and Cannabis Culture. They weren't doing fuck all with it. They were just uh, fucking. They did security here for years. Bought, they barely bought a food. Lot of <laughs> a lot of catnip. Yeah. Like people just brought them food. They were like, we're good. They were mouse security detail. So, you know, they worked 20, 24 7 virtually. Here now, Greg brings my mouse once in a while so they can feel like they're still active. <laughs> 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 I know I miss those guys. It's kind of sad when I come up the stairs early in the morning now. Oh, and yeah. They, and there's none around. Not, they're not, yeah. Because they would always be like right there, ready to greet you first thing in the morning. Yeah. Thinking say, you're the one who's going to feed them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Even if it's not you, it don't matter. Yeah. What's that? Um, we auditioning not, for new I think new we're cats. gonna wait till after Christmas to see what goes on first with like couple pitters, government crackdowns and things, <laughs> or like who knows what happens. But yeah, we might. Uh, we still have our two cats downstairs, Curtis and Joey, Aww. so they're still in the store. But yeah, and Buds and Tippy, we'll we'll have to do a little pot TV check in with Buds and Tippy sometime That's soon. That's a really good idea. One man's place, yeah. If I'm ever by there, I'll just do a video and we'll like interview them yeah. or something. <laughs> Bring them yeah. on. Bring well, they're show. you know he's they're very well kept at at that place, and he's they're hanging with marijuana man, keeping in company. Yeah, yeah. He's lonely without them, so he really loved them for a long time. And because Greg was like the manager of the lounge before in the past. And so he was here when they first came. And uh, yeah, there's a a picture of uh, Monica, who used to do security for us, holding buds back in the day above her head. And it's just this massive, Massive huge orange cat. cat. Buds is so gigantic. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, Oh, look who is here, though. This guy, this guy with the red eyes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so we're having Stoney, a Stoney the snowman. <laughs> if, if anybody can... Yeah, Stoney. That's pretty good. Stoney His snowman. eyes were as red as <laughs> yeah. candy canes. Frosted the snowman. And remember, remember this year, everyone, at Christmas, when you're with the family and they say, oh, are well, your eyes red? You're like, no, that's candy cane eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Tis the season. <laughs> um, so we do actually. I, I wanted to talk about something on the show um, that we had to talk, or that we went to the other day, and I wanted to talk about because it's such an important thing. We had to go to this thing, and it was a really important thing that we went to. I um, Niche Canada. You did skip it, but I'm so glad I went. It was one. Of, it was I'm super. Sad I didn't. <laughs> it was enlightening to be there to see some of this stuff, and it was nice actually to have the opportunity to kind of what it was was. Called Called Niche Canada, and now I can't remember what Niche is in the National Institute for Cannabis Health and Education. Education. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Brenda Rosotti is the person who put it all together. She was amazing. Had quite a crew there. Had some government officials, including somebody representing the federal government, the provincial government, and the city of Vancouver there nice. to kind of field questions from the audience Ooh, and like take <laughs> take our abuse. Uh, w- w- which was gra- well received Probably and granted. Paid, that city guy. Yeah, well, they were saying some nonsensical things, so some of us uh, had to stand up and sort of ask 
ask them questions. Unfortunately, they they weren't really being honest or genuine about the way things were, and they were like denigrating the medical marijuana program or just saying that there's not a lot of evidence for it, things like that. So it's kind of ridiculous. But we actually have video from some of that. I was there with Jody and uh, a, couple, a couple others from Cannabis Culture. And yeah, through the day, there was a lot of industry people there too as well. And it was interesting to see the industry people essentially saying the same things that we've been saying for 25 years. You know, they are huh. now there and they're criticizing the new regulations in a huge way. And in well, fact, one of the videos. I feel bad for even like the legal people that are trying to make weed. Like, yeah. they're bound by a lot of conditions that oh, make yeah. it fucking Impossible. hard for them to be like, oh, here's some fucking weed that's like this. No, it's They're ridiculous. Like, what? It's ridiculous. Those have to change, you know what I mean? And like and they should be lobbying for that first, but whatever. You know the what fact I mean? that the uh, the cannabis act itself is infringing on our free speech rights in mm -hmm. huge ways. So the name of the show today is Is the Cannabis Act Constitutional? And one no. of the things we're gonna play on the show is a, a some, like a little presentation from a lawyer who was there. Lawyer. And he was actually really great. He had a lot of stuff to say about the constitutionality of the Cannabis Act and specifically how it relates to um, the Charter Rights and Freedoms regarding free speech and overbreadth and a few other things. Um, the way that the politicians put this thing together doesn't really meet the criteria once you put it under scrutiny for what would need to be constitutional. Um, you know, and we have a Charter of Rights and Freedoms in Canada that says certain things have to, uh, you know, you can't have make laws that are infringing on people's rights for no reason, essentially. If you're going to be infringing on people's rights and their free, especially free speech rights, you have to have a good reason for doing it. Um, and in this particular case, it doesn't look like they really have any reason for doing it because the Cannabis Act, if you guys don't know, makes things like telling people where to go after they smoke cannabis illegal. You're not yeah, allowed having to having like cannabis and yeah. words together like the happy no, cannabis exactly. or whatever would be like no. Yeah. No, you're not allowed to portray cannabis in any way that makes people feel like it's um, a positive lifestyle choice. That's right. It it can't look glamorous or athletic. Can't make it look like it's uh, We know this guy. <laughs> he won a right. gold you know, medal. Yeah. <laughs> it's not can't be fun. No, so no, this, it's not right no now, fun allowed. This, this is illegal. Exactly, event. that is illegal. This art and and what that tells me is that, that that's candy dab. that's a that's broaching fascism. Yeah, or maybe it is. It is. Broaching oh, yeah. when when art becomes illegal. Right. No, it's right, ridiculous. So, uh, people in in Quebec, if you want. You know, a token of, of yeah. Well, what do you? <laughs> Turn be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Yeah. I think it clear your history after yeah. watching. I think this. we can take it, yeah, further even than like it's a form of fascism for sure, and it's a very specific thing that fascists do is genocide, and yeah. I, I'm not saying they're killing pot people, but they're trying to kill our culture. And that's part of genocide is that you try to eradicate a culture. Well, making someone's culture illegal, making mm -hmm. art and us talking to each other about where we go when we smoke weed and all this kind of shit, that shit, that's nasty shit. That, yeah. is, that is cultural robbery. That's like trying, that's destructive to our culture. We have a cannabis culture and they're, you know, they're either trying to appropriate our culture or they're trying to destroy it or they're doing mm -hmm. both at the same time. And that is the mark of a fascist in a huge way, so... You know, mm -hmm. we've had a few problems in the past with stuff just like that, and we don't need to go down this route in Canada. The alternative is just no. legalizing the culture that's there. Don't try to recreate things. Yeah, it's like good. Yeah, we're we're happy the way we are. We don't need all these liberals in charge of it to be cool. You know, make what we do legal instead of illicit. Well, the only reason it was illegal is because the the government big pharma couldn't make money off of it because it was grown by people out in the land right? right so if it was legal then they'd have no control over it so what they've tried to do you know they, they figured oh well if we can have a monopoly on it then yeah, it can be legal because that's the only thing that's been keeping it from being illegal is that we couldn't make money off it so they, they figured out a way to make money off of it other than just jailing people and giving them fines um, yeah, so so now it's it's this version of of being legal that is in really in name only and the whole thing is 
quite corrupt, actually. Well, it's legal in the sense that, yeah, you're not going to go to jail, you're not going to do this, but the fines and stuff that they might impose on you tend to be a lot more than even if they were if you're going to go to jail, which kind of doesn't really make... It, it makes... They'll put you in jail if you yes, don't pay them, right. which could happen to a lot of, like, homeless people and people that are out or, like, poor. just poor person, yeah, in general, you know? Like, something happens, you're on a boat, yeah, you got a couple hundred dollar fine. It's it's hard to pay those sometimes, like, even, like... Uh, yeah. 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 What? You got stoned, forgot to go to yeah, court. And these these fines like, aren't shit. like... The, these fines begin at a couple hundred dollars, but they go up to thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. You know, and for, for using the wrong kind of imagery and advertising. Totally. And they might even go higher as oh, it's, yeah. yeah. Second, third, that's quick. That's, yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Fifty thousand dollars Well, they'll take, now if you're illegal, if, you if you're a company and you have a license to do this, they'll take your license away. Or I what's even it. crazier is that what the he this guy mentions the lawyer mentions in this talk is lawyer that if you are a business and you don't do your paperwork correctly then all of you the stuff you've been doing is deemed illicit cannabis and illicit activity so Ugh. you've been actually trafficking cannabis illegally and you're <sighs> subject to criminal law um, so if you don't do your paperwork correctly, just in like filing for your store that Everything, you have or your, your LP, stock, your weed, then you're, yeah, you're trafficking illegal marijuana. So that's some crazy, crazy stuff. That's scary for any business owner. Like, you know, what business person wants to get into a business where if you fuck up on the paperwork or some idiot that you hired f screws up somewhere, all of a sudden it's all illegal cannabis? Like, that's a scary situation. And it's a huge liability that nobody really wants when it comes to business. It seems like the government is intentionally making it so hard to actually invest in this type of cannabis industry because especially on the uh on the retail side but it's because they don't want competition for their government stores yeah so, yeah so they only have yeah. a few stores but if they have shitty weed it's not going to matter it don't matter people aren't going to buy it after a while right That's so don't don't go to any government stores for goodness sake no, do not spend your money <coughs> Yeah. yeah, support Always. a private store. Fuck the government and their stupid stores. The government. Why does anybody? Why should we go? I don't want to have to like <laughs> go your to own the people who are making trade it weed with your friend. Time. Yeah, is like, that LP weed in the jar on the table? No, no, we wouldn't do that. So, no, I, I was just wondering because you said something about it, but um, that you you bought some in Cam Kamloops. Yeah, and your experience. You had an experience there. And see, that's that's another thing really wrong with this monopoly is that. If you even if we you do get a licensed a store, you have to buy from these licensed producers that are not all of them, but a lot of them are consistently producing terrible weed, <coughs> not just <coughs> subpar, Boy, like uh, weed that nobody would ever really sell on the black market. You know, it's true. It's, it's disgusting. Like, it's even like worse than like beasters would be to like a California person. They're like, oh. And that was like the rejected weed from British Columbia years ago. It looked bad, and it looked. But at least it like Under tasted okay. It looked like they had actually washed it. And you know what? Somebody was saying, um, and I'm not sure if this is 100% true. I I'm need to look say this it's up. True. But <coughs> they, uh, people were saying that they're actually allowed a very small amount of butane to be left on, like, count of butane on the flower. Um, well, they're allowed a bunch of stuff that they shouldn't be, I don't think. I, that means they can wash it and then sell you the shit they've washed with butane. They take all the trichomes off, and you get it, and it's totally stripped of all the goodies. What do they use that for? Well, Throw it out? They can't use, they're not using it in their tinter. It's only 3%. Uh, or they're, they're making not, like they're a not ton supposed of it. To be making they're extracts. Ex I think they're getting ready for the new... They're getting ready for the concentrate market in Canada. They're to ship concentrate mm -hmm. internationally. Yeah. That's what I heard anyway. Oh, or they blast it with gamma radiation, which also... <laughs> Turns that, it into the fucking Incredible Hulk weed. Yeah. And Don't piss it off. Unfortunately, it doesn't get bigger or greener. <laughs> it just gets roasted. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you know what? I know it sounds crazy, and I was like, how could really people, you think LPs are actually washing it? But I had somebody who was sitting in my office yesterday who's a, ver a grower of very fine quality marijuana, um, that does this on a large scale and has been doing it for a while illegally. And this is what they, this person was passing on to me, that he, he was saying that he personally knows that this is happening. 
So, I mean, he knows a lot of growers and stuff. That's just, you know, I can't give any names or anything like that. But that is the truth. And I don't, again, not I can't, can't, that is not verified. Mm-hmm. That is not, you know. Well, and just I generally, not they're not, yeah, and generally, they're not very, li- like, like easy with the cannabis. Like, they're not treating it well all the way down the line. Like, yeah. That too, but just even, like, on purpose and not on purpose, I think. Like, you can tell, you just look at it, you're like, oh, shit, that's been beat up, like. Mm-hmm. You know, just throwing around. It's like screen dried, tumbled, maybe machine trimmed, or even the hand trimmed stuff's been right. like Bounced. trimmed, but they just like fucking throw it or store it or do something, you know, yeah. along the way that's and not. Just nice. in those containers, it gets knocked around. It's oh, like the hard shakes. containers. It's By also in. You it's, your hands on it, there's no trichomes left. And it's sitting in plastic, right? So, yeah. it, you know, you, if, if, if anything needs to be cured and things need to be cured properly, it needs to be done in glass and it's going to start curing in the plastic. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. starts smelling like plastic and tasting like plastic. Mm-hmm. And some of the weed we did have came in plastic bags, which was probably better than the, all the crazy packaging for those stupid containers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, but the plastic bags crushed the weed, and they smelled worse. Like the weed in the plastic bags smelled like plastic, mm. so that wasn't good. So it was but like a shitty plastic. I think that was the best weed we had, though, was the stuff that was in the plastic bags. We actually did see... I still products. have some of that weed at home. I don't know. We sent a bunch to the lab to get tested to see like what's left on it, residual-wise or whatever, mm-hmm. just because some of it was so fucking there. And what, <laughs> did any results back? or still? No, I'm still waiting, but yeah, as soon as they come in, we'll be posting it here. And so you separate it all by like which one is which and everything? Yeah, by brand yes. and strain. Cool. Oh, good. But that yeah, it's good. not cheap because you need like a few grams of each to kind of get it all done. And Did you buy new stuff? Uh, no, well, I ordered some in the mail too. So I also uh, bought some at the store and I ordered some in the mail to see how that would go. Yeah. Just to be like, ha, 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 I got weed in the mail. Just got an ounce in the mail sort of thing, you know? Yeah. Nice. Huh. But I didn't yeah. buy an ounce. Only, an ounce. Yeah, but I only bought like legal weed not an ounce, maybe but, like eleven grams or something. Because yeah, I was yeah. still like an ounce will cost you like five hundred bucks. Yeah, and I'm fucking <laughs> not gonna smoke it. So I was like, uh. <laughs> if you ordered it in Alberta, like at the Alberta stores, <laughs> Jody came back, and when she went to the Alberta store, the legal uh, private store, and they were selling DNA eight eighths for fifty six dollars. What? Yeah. It's like Cali prices, or not, uh, Amsterdam prices. Like Amsterdam prices, for yeah. sure, or more Jeez. expensive even. Like even in Amsterdam, that I don't know. Yeah, I guess it'd be like five grand. Well, it'd be life. like 56 euros, so whatever the hell that is. Yeah. $800 Canadian. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, <dinner>. painful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, if, and that's, if, I, if I paid 56 bucks for an eighth of weed, I'd want it you know, to make me levitate. No kidding. You know, it'd have to be that good. <laughs> Something. And you know, it'd have to be absolutely magic. Nothing less. And that's why I always thought this whole idea that, oh, just because there's a legal market, it means the price of weed's going to go down. No, mm-hmm. because if you look at Amsterdam, the price of weed didn't go down in Amsterdam, or it's not cheaper than it once was. I don't think, is it? Well, it was cheaper just because the only way it was cheaper is when they had a gilder as compared to the euro because the gilder was worth way less ev- to everyone else and then yeah. they switched to the euro which made it like mm-hmm. more yes but even then i think it was like still it probably it, wasn't it, cheap. yeah it wasn't like oh it was like two dollars a gram canadian it was still like five or six bucks a gram i'm thinking i don't yeah. i don't honestly know but yeah i've seen some of the old menus and I but think it's they been just switch over they've had the stores in amsterdam for like over 20 years right yeah, I don't know how long exactly. I think it's been th- almost 30 years. Long time. Yeah. As long as that. Or maybe it's even more than that, but I don't know. Alexia, how long have yes. the... Uh... <laughs> and it really is because of guys at Bulldog just like opening the jacket, doing the thing. Yeah, right? they had a guy that had a leather jacket that sat at the coffee bar and just was like, hey, what do you guys want? And then it was like, he'd get arrested. Then like the next guy would be like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then the next guy would do it, and the next guy would do it. And they finally, just pass the jacket off. Yeah, and then finally the police <laughs> were like, okay, like every time we go in there, we went in there six times or eight times in one day, and there's always a guy there, so this isn't going to stop. Can we do something? And then they added some laws, and there was like a whole bunch at one time, I think like 700 or something. And that all those guys get taxed like 50% on everything, so it's just like outrageous taxes on like the abnormal stuff like a soda and shit like that but mm-hmm. and the weed of course but you know mm-hmm. 
but all that money went to like do the infrastructure of like all the the streets, like the bike paths, the tram, all the trains, all that stuff. Like that all came from like coffee shop money, and then they decided like let's start closing them down. And now I think there's only like under 200. I want to say I don't honestly know the number, but it's way less than like, I guess that original 700. <laughs> I'm like, chuckling because <laughs> Coop W says Freddie's doing a Netflix special. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I would love to see he that. He should do a creamy then. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to promote the suppositories on that one. I'll do fucking <laughs> smoking off stage for him. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's really funny stuff. But yeah, so I mean, we were, I guess we started this whole thing on the topic of. Uh, what were we talking about? The, the new regulations. The can, can yeah, the new regulations yeah. and how the, are Cannabis they constitutional Act. or not? So we're, we're going to play a few videos from this niche conference. Back to back to back. And Neil has them split up so we can talk about one and then come back and talk about a little bit and then we'll, we'll go on to the next one. But what, what order you got them in or does it matter? Uh, I've got all your questions to government officials and a bit about uh, what municipalities have done first. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Half is all all right, we're going to do it in order. We're going to start with the early in the daytime stuff. So the government officials were the first ones up, and uh, they went up and spouted off like blah, 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 some boring shit about how great they are. They didn't talk about any of the problems or anyth any of the, <laughs> like anything at all that people have questioned. You know, like right now we have the, all the newspapers talking about the shortages, the lack of supply, all of the troubles, not mentioned once by any of them. They only talked about the like, oh, our new system's going to be amazing. But so, <laughs> so people got up and started asking some the questions. The system works, but there's yeah. no weed there. <laughs> so yeah, this was at the Croatian Cultural Center here in Vancouver, and this was the Niche Conference. Enjoy. I disagree with that vehemently. I think that right now, medical patients, I mean, we are the ones that basically were on the front lines fighting for this. The reason that legalization is here is because we were fighting for it. And now it seems that access is being denied. It's a great big conundrum for most of us. We cannot get access to our medications and there seems to be no plan to do so. The stores right now only offer dry bud and oil of less than 3%, which is not medicinal. Okay, so what are the actual plans right now to develop a system that addresses the medical cannabis need that has existed and will continue to exist in spite of the plans of the government that I hear to do away with the, the separate stream within five years? There will be no consideration for medical cannabis. What's, what's the story with that? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, that's, that's a great question and really a, a fundamental policy uh, yes. issue that we're, we're discussing. So I would say there's no, there's no plan to dismantle the, the medical system. I think what uh, was publicly committed to was a review of the medical system. So when, when we were forging ahead towards uh, legalization of non-medical cannabis, I mean, I think the decision was, well, we have a medical system in place that, that is working, let's keep it, and we will review it uh, over time to see the impacts of, the, of how non-medical legalization is impacting the medical regime. Is it still serving the need? Do adjustments need to be made? And you can't buy the product. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to ask that you... So the products, I mean, so, you, you. so the, remain, the medical system remains where you, you know, if we have a, a doctor's uh, the documentation, you can register with a license, federal licensee to order directly. And one new provision we put in the, in the regulations is prior, previously, you were sort of committed to that one uh, licensed producers uh, until you get a new medical document. So you, you were kind of bound to that licensed producer. You now can request that that uh, document be transferred to another producer. If, if you're 
product that you want is not available, you can ask to be transferred to another uh, producer to access it uh, in that manner. We also have a, a new provision where uh, if you have a medical documentation and you want to purchase from a non-medical uh, retail store, uh, you can have authorization, sort of possession authorization to possess more than the 30 gram limit if, you, if your medical needs require that. So if you, if you have a, if you want to walk around with 60 grams because you know, you're traveling somewhere, you need a month's supply or whatever, uh, you can have uh, that documentation from Health Canada that will authorize you for, for possession of it. The problem is access. Sorry, um, I'm going to let all of the panelists answer the question and I am going to ask that um, um, participants ask a question and then if you feel like you'd like more detail, I think all of the panelists have indicated they will be here during the breaks. Thank you for coming out and engaging with us all today, and thank you, Brenda, for acknowledging the work of activists for decades before I even showed up on the scene. Um, I want to just, I think I need to elaborate on the question about medical access. Um, while it is true there is a system, I am part of that system, I'm a registered medical patient. I have a credit card, so I can go online and spend $400 to get my medicine delivered to me, and when it arrives, I have to take whatever I get. I believe the concern for patients and the issue of access is that dispensaries have already existed and demonstrated an ability to, to provide the access, particularly to patients who are of low income, who do not have a credit card, who cannot afford $400, or the minimum of a 5 gram order, which equals $50 at least. For many medical patients, they walk down the street to a dispensary with $5 cash in their pocket and they can get a joint and they can look at it and decide which one they want by the smell and know if it'll work and then they can go home and smoke half that joint that night and half the next day. They don't have to wait three days for the post office to deliver mail from a larger producer. So the issue of access I think is that for most medical consumers they've already seen a working model and right now as the newspapers are proving a lot of the medical cannabis access is being lost to the recreational market because the licensed producers are so limited that their supply is going to the recreational market to meet the demands of the government contracts they signed on to across the country so why would the government not allow the legalization and licensing of the existing industry and providers, similar to how in other provinces, Uber and Airbnb were illegal, but got regulated into existence. They weren't replaced. Um, and the vast majority of the existing cannabis industry and the dispensaries that are in the court case right now with the city of Vancouver, which we hope to make peace. We want to exist peacefully and be included. But I think the major concern for access for patients is that the dispensary model of medical dispensaries worked and now the provincial rules prohibit the mention of medical or dispensaries in the name of the business, is my understanding. So it removes the medical angle because if cannabis is medicine, how can you arrest people for it? So I, my question is, will the city of Vancouver and the province of British Columbia and the federal government acknowledge that there is a model in place that already works and the people in that model are begging to be included and begging to be able to transition instead of excluded and demonized as illegal cannabis providers when legalization should mean there isn't any illegal cannabis. So will you accommodate storefront medical dispensaries providing the access to the enormous supply that already exists yes. because there is no shortage of cannabis in British Columbia or Canada. There's a shortage of the legal cannabis but there's illicit cannabis begging to be licit wanting to be legal, will there be a quick effort to transition the existing industry into legalization through the retail, wholesale, growing, and all those fronts, instead of trying to eliminate it? That's my question. Yes, Thank you, John. I, mean, that, I, mean, I think those arguments are, are not new. Uh, we, we've, we've heard them before, for sure. Um, I guess on the first part of the question about transitioning, allowing, uh, giving a pathway for those uh, facilities to, to become, uh, would come within the legal system. You know, I think that's largely a decision at the provincial and municipal level, creating a pathway for that to happen. In Ontario, I think the government said if you, if you were to close by October 17th, you can reapply for uh, Ontario's uh, 
uh, retail market in the spring. Um, but to the other points about uh, you know, the, positioning yourself as a medical retail outlet, I, I think from a federal pers uh, perspective, the position is that, again, there's not, you don't have the, the evidence base to make health claims. And so I think the position, the policy from, uh, from government is that precautionary principle. We don't, we don't want uh, sore fronts or whatever giving medical advice with, from cannabis until there's definitive research. So that was part of the conversation this morning in my talk about the need for research. So we're trying to create that evidence base in the research so that um, if, they're, you know, if we can make those claims, uh, if we can be in a position to provide, uh, doctors and others can be in a position to provide that type of advice. So I think there's still, there's still ways to go on, on that medical regime and building up that evidence base in the research. And then on the provincial side, um, the province is, is regulating non-medical sales and uh, it is open um, to individuals who have operated illegal dispensaries to make an application to be licensed under that provincial retail regime. But it is correct that it's a non-medical regime um, and that the, uh, those who are licensed will need to buy only from federally licensed producers the product that is regulated and tested. Kathy, any thoughts? Really, nothing further. I mean, we're so we're a bit down the chain, right? And that we're really um, bound by what legal product is actually available to be sold. And I think that's what I'm hearing is the concern is the product itself isn't quite what the consumers are looking for. Um, and that's really, um, again, the municipal role um, is is beyond that. Is is really just around where and how it's operating in community. But what's on the shelves? I really, uh, we really look to our, our provincial and federal colleagues to really set what those products can be. And, and I think one of the things that's really important for somebody like me who's new um, uh, to cannabis community and uh, new to cannabis consumption is that I do I do agree that um, providing medical advice, if you are not somebody, for example, who was one of the original. Um, the you know compassion clubs or somebody who has a real in-depth knowledge of cannabis, uh, a first-time bad experience can turn somebody off, whether they're medic medicinal or recreational user. And I I do believe that the research is out there. I don't believe that the research has become mainstream enough or peer-reviewed enough or legitimate legitimized by existing health organizations. Whereas I do understand government who does have a bigger burden than a lot of us in dealing with this file that um, you know we do have to do a better job but as we've talked about this is a transition and it's a beginning and uh, it's a bumpy one but I, I think we will get there but I would be equally as concerned if I were walking into a retail store or referring a friend as I refer many now um, to one of the dispensaries that I believe uh, the person behind the counter has the type of knowledge to be giving them some advice but if it was a, a new fresh person being hired and having somebody not consume the product property the first time and having have them had a bad experience they are going to remove themselves from having cannabis be an option whether it's for medicinal or recreational use so i think we do have a responsibility around the issue of claims um, and I do believe now, and I'm very, very hopeful, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, that a lot of the research dollars that have been allocated in the budget do go out uh, to those people who can bring that information um, forward for um, patients and for consumers, um, but also do it in a way that's easy to digest. Uh, government speak is sometimes very complicated and don't know a lot of people who will have time to read a 300 page report, uh, but I think that making sure that it's communicated in a way that people can easily access and understand will be very, very important. Yeah, and I think that's a great point that I think the dialogue and, and the, the evidence base needs to be in the public domain, ideally in the public domain and in the academic domain, and not in the court system, which has unfortunately sort of been the case yeah. up to this point where evidence has been sort of through courts and then decisions have been made and, and where we are in the medical regime has been driven largely by, by the court system. So hopefully going forward, uh, we don't need to rely on the courts to make decisions for us that we can uh, collectively sort of have an evidence base to make logical policy going forward. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate
appreciate you guys coming here. Uh, I've been a marijuana activist for a long time, and I, I'm looking forward to uh, this country moving in the right direction on these things. Um, but just before my question, quickly, I think that uh, the idea that there's not enough evidence to uh, move forward and protect the patients mm -hmm. that are using cannabis now is, quite frankly, in my opinion, preposterous. Yeah. I know that there is a, maybe a lack in some cases of peer-reviewed studies and stuff, but anecdotal evidence is a form of evidence. And actually, right now, there's lots of peer-reviewed studies on yeah, cannabis sure. being done around the world, thousands of them, um, that show the medical benefits. So to say, to have a government official saying there's not enough evidence is not, I think that's inaccurate. And also the idea that, well, we've had, it's been in the courts and we need to, you know, the politicians need to look at that. The reason that it's been in the courts is because the politicians have refused to look at the evidence uh -huh. that's there. Um, and they've refused to make moves for long, a long, long time uh, in this country to move on these things. We're finally catching up. But this idea that you have to have you know, new research, cannabis has been researched for a long time and it's been proven in the courts. And that's why we've had to go to the courts and judges have said that this is absolutely something that helps people. So in my opinion, I don't think that's a, a good enough answer. Um, but yeah. my question is uh, something that um, was raised a couple times here is the idea of consumption spaces. So in Vancouver, I'm, I'm the CEO of Cannabis Culture. We've had consumption spaces in Vancouver for over a dozen years. Um, and there's hundreds, thousands of people that come to use cannabis. They bring their own cannabis to consume in our consumption spaces. Uh, right. We're providing a safe place for these people to use because as you guys have mentioned, with the new rules going forward, um, there's a lot of issues on where people can consume, and that's for medical patients as well. The apartment that I live in, I will not be able to consume it, and most of the apartments in Vancouver are going to be like that. You can't consume in parks, you can't consume in your car. As you said, you can't consume close to buildings, so you kind of have to walk down the middle of the street to smoke your pot, pretty much. Um, so again, I didn't hear you guys give any response to consumption spaces. In Vancouver, liquor is consumed everywhere. Yeah. We have 77 liquor stores uh, open, or, but we also have thousands of places where you can go and consume liquor on every street corner. In fact, they're talking about allowing it in parks. You can, I can yeah. go to the barber shop and get my hair cut and get a beer. So are you guys working on consumption spaces? It's a dire need. Our community has said that we need these things. The medical community needs them. We yeah. need a place to, a safe consumption space, just like uh, all the other substances will have. Um, are you guys working on that? And what are you going to do to provide those for the for Canadians who drastically need that? Yeah. That's up to the province and the municipality. I don't think Health Canada has taken a position and won't. It, it's not within your jurisdiction, right? So Mary, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. Happy to speak to that one. So I guess uh, the place to start on that is that um, I think we've recognized at the province all along that was that the legalization date was just the start and that licensed consumption spaces are something that we can consider in future. Um, I guess I will say that part of the decisions that we took with respect to public use were informed precisely by the fact that we don't have licensed consumption spaces now like we do for alcohol. And so I get lots of cards and letters um, equally from people who are concerned about the fact that we're letting people use cannabis in public. And they say, not allowed to use alcohol in public, why are people allowed to do this? And, and I say precisely because they are different, right? You, you, you can use can you can use alcohol in your home. Um, some people will not be able to smoke in their homes, um, and you can find licensed alcohol consumption places all over the place. So yeah, it's definitely something that can be looked at in future. Um, but like I say, we generally have not restricted the consumption of non-inhaled forms of of cannabis, um, and and there are public spaces where people will be able to smoke and drink. But so I, I like to start off with this picture of Red Rocks Amphitheater, which if any of you ever have the opportunity to visit Denver, this is a must see for any kind of uh, music or, or movie. Um, it, it's a world renowned uh, venue, it's a park, it's a point of pride for our city, and it, it's actually owned and operated by the, the city government as well. And so people have ownership of it and, and feel very much that uh, Red Rocks is, is a part of the city's identity. Um, the other thing, of course, about Red Rocks is that people have been smoking grass at Red Rocks since we still called it smoking grass, right? Like, this has been happening for a long time. And it never really seemed to be much of a, a public concern. 
after, legal, after legalization, after we implemented this, the complaints started going through the roof. Every night there was a concert there, the city would get flooded with talk of why is cannabis smoking allowed in the amphitheater, I got my kids there, it's, the smoke is annoying to me, basically every kind of complaint you could expect. And it was interesting to me that that happened post-legalization, and what it did was sort of illustrated to me that because it's legal now, because people are taking an interest in this subject, and because people actually are trying to figure out what is legal and what isn't, uh, the city needs to do a better job of delineating for folks where this can be consumed and, and how. During the summer and fall months, our cannabis team on the Denver Police Department does nothing but enforce against illegal home grows. Um, that's a different kind of black market that I was mentioning earlier. You know, again, our, our local trade, that's mostly been absorbed by the regulated market. Uh, our police department has a data analyst that goes through every single crime in the city of Denver and flags the one that have a direct correlation to cannabis. Uh, that's less than a half of 1% of overall crime in Denver. So it's an issue, it's absolutely a problem, but to put it into some perspective, um, you know, a, a city of Denver size, 700,000 people, has a lot of other issues that are, that are happening that are uh, have nothing to do with cannabis. And as it was mentioned earlier today, where do you let this happen? Um, and, and once you decide on a, a direction and you start to unpack the issues, you realize very quickly how difficult this is because no one wants it in their backyard, but everyone wants a place to do this, right? It's a legal product, it can be purchased legally, it can be grown legally, it can be consumed and carried legally, but where are you supposed to enjoy it? And we have a particular issue in our state constitution that public consumption of cannabis is illegal. And we have not had the legislative action in Colorado to further define that and create some carve-outs that would necessitate the ability for local jurisdictions to put in place something that actually works. Denver voters pushed a social use initiative that passed, uh, but unfortunately, in order to comport with all of the state laws, um, including our ban on public consumption, it doesn't create a successful business model. So you've got a situation where you can't do it in a cannabis store. Uh, you can't do it anywhere that alcohol is served. You can't do it in public. And there are the same sort of distance restrictions on these places that we have for other types of cannabis businesses. So it's hard to create a business model that would work for social use. And until we have something that uh, retailers can actually carve out a space of their facility or a tasting room type of model or something like that for cultivators to have, uh, you know, samples and, and things like that, we're, we're still going to run into this issue. And, and what that does is creates uh, a headache for local law enforcement. And it, in my opinion, makes cities look bad when you've got a place like Red Rocks where of course you're not gonna be able to enforce those types of laws uh, when you've got 10,000 people at a concert enjoying a show. Um, so what we've done is created a system of rules that we can't enforce and, and that's problematic. So this is always something that I, I sort of flag um, to other cities and certainly provincial governments that are dealing with this to, to try to figure out where and how and when we can do these things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. That guy was okay. So from go. Red Rock. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the interesting stuff. So, yeah, the, that was kind of just us barking back at those government officials. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they were pretty much full of shit. Um, they, you know, I understand their perspective on it, but they didn't really answer the questions. They weren't genuine, and they didn't really get to the heart of what the whole matter was about. They just kind of avoided it and tried to paint to the heart a pretty of picture. The matter. <laughs> yes, to the heart of the matter. Um, didn't happen, though. So that was sad. Sad, but true. <laughs> Um, <laughs> a little Metallica there. Yeah, they're that in. Yeah. Um, I have a bong toke. I have a fucking dab um, toke right here. We should do a sponsored bong toke. So this bong toke is brought to you by who? Brought to you dun, dun, by dun, Sunwest dun. Genetics. Sunwest Genetics. Get your seeds there. That's right. Sunwest right Genetics. We got them right here. Right there. Giveaway. These giveaway? are here. It's a fucking dun, giveaway dun, dun, today, dun. everyone. Line up. <laughs> Sunwest Genetics. These are the seeds. Where's the Sunwest cam? There it is. Dun dun dun. Blue Dream. Some Blue Dream seeds from Sunwest Genetics. Are we gonna give these away today? Yeah, All right, let's do it. We're giving them away. 
So we're gonna give away blue dream seeds too. How are we gonna do this? The first message on Facebook to Pot first TV. First picture of your weed. So to the you got to go to the Pot TV's Facebook page and send them a message. And if you don't have Facebook, I guess are you shit out of luck? This is for those who have Facebook. Yeah, we gotta. Yeah, we gotta <laughs> set it. So go to Facebook and uh, yeah. And what about for the YouTube people? Do, should we? Do YouTube. we have another pack? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Well, it's really hard to send a message on YouTube. Uh, if, you, if you send me a message on YouTube, I will send you something. Okay. Like Facebook? It's good. Seeds. Maybe not these seeds, but I'll send you some seeds. But Canada only. Yes. Canada only, please. But there you go. So Respect our boundaries. Sun West. <laughs> yeah. And oh, we Sydney. got somebody responding already. Oh, yeah, we see that. Look, oh, boom, that boom. guy. Oh. Seeds. Okay. Yeah. Fucking Mr. Saint Germain coming through. That's right. So we have a wiener. First person gets seeds, but I'll still send seeds to everybody. I'll send you some seeds. You get seeds. If you, you want seeds. Oh, that's good. Yes, exactly. I'm we're, doing it, dab. We're being, we're Oprah. We're being the, doing the Oprah thing. Everybody this isn't gets. a sponsored dab, but it's a fucking dab nonetheless. And Sydney, do you want? Uh, would you like a bong toke? I'd love a bong toke. Here, you more can, than a dab. Please. You can do the sponsored bong toke. Perfect and awesome. What what's in the bowl? It's mimosa, mm. which is a hybrid, and I believe that it's a cross between. Mm, shit, I forget now. I can't believe I forget. <laughs> oh man. Well, it's Gelato high and fucking tangy. <laughs> Mimosa. No. Champagne and tangy. Sure, it's delicious. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> I, I knew it. I had it in my head. Carly looked it up. <laughs> but this no, I forget. This jaw is huge. I have a small mouth. Hold on. <laughs> it is pretty wide. It's a thick bong. And Mr. Cookie. Is there a draw? Uh, no. Is it? You got to hit it hard. Yep, there you go. That's how hard you gotta hit that thing. Hey. Woo. Bless you. I have to do another one because I had to make a seal like one, a. Yep. Three, do it. Four, you can read. Do you want to help lighting it there? You could. Cookie could give you a hand. Yeah. Here, yeah. If you can, uh, you light while I make the two-handed seal after you're done. <laughs> The two-handed seal. <laughs> it sounds like some sort of freak of nature, like er 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 er. Oh, ready? Torch. All right. Wow, it's normal plan. There we go. Helping hand coming through. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. There you go. Bam. Mmm, that's really smooth. There you go. Hit that bong. Boom, that was the path life frozen. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, so, that was really delicious. Once I figured out the bong. Available Mimosa. at Cassiar, Davy Street, Canvas Cultures. I don't, I don't have my phone working. The battery died, or I would look it up, but it was something delicious. And yeah. it's kind of light. It's almost like a White Castle. It almost smells like a White Castle. I like it. Yeah, it is. It's, it's got high notes. And high it's notes. It's not like a deep, skunky thing at no, all. No, it's not. No, no, it's very... It's, like, it's the opposite. Yeah. I like the light side of things. I like mm -hmm. a love potion, the White Castle. These are nice dreams. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So we do have more video from the Niche Conference. Now this one... That's a niche. That's... that's it's neat video from the Niche <laughs> Conference. Um, this video, I think, is where it goes into the afternoon. And, uh, Anil, maybe you can tell us what's on the video. Uh, it's about uh, uh, production development. You didn't put in the stuff about the fish and all that in there, did you? I did. You did? How long does it go? <laughs> 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 um, but you, did you get the stuff from that last lawyer about the constitutionality? Yes. That's all on it too? Yeah. 
Okay, because that stuff is the shit I want to see for sure. Oh, it's, it's all on there. It's all on there? Okay, it's well. A minute of the fish. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, so Anil. All right, so check this out. Um, this is Anil's highlights. And uh, it's they're, they're, the whole conference was totally worth it. So I was just kind of joking around. But um, yeah, all of it was worth watching. This is the, some of the, the highlight reel. Highlight. But yeah, this, the lawyer talks about the constitutionality stuff. Pays very close attention because this Cannabis Act is really nasty in a lot of ways. And I don't think that everybody's paying attention to the full scope of it at the moment. So. They're just like, it's legal. Smoke screen. Yeah. Cumulative Let's effects analysis and land use planning. I got invited to go down to UC Davis and make a presentation relating to salmon. And uh, so uh, when I got down there, I spent a week with a bunch of biologists working on salmon and, and found out that one of the big problems for them in the Sacramento River was the illegal cannabis grow in Northern California that in the middle of the night was drawing down river levels and there was no water left for the fish. And so I started to realize the potential significance of this industry. Uh, and then uh, got introduced to Scott later on, and, we, and I started to learn more about the King City experience. And, and uh, I just want to share some of, uh, I guess, what I've learned from them and, and maybe bring it back home to Canada and British Columbia and show you some examples. I have this, first of all, do you guys know what this is? It's a newspaper, yeah. Who, who reads a newspaper? All right, that's pretty good. I, I, I read this one free to my house. I also have a bunch of uh, subscriptions on my phone, but it is still nice to, to actually have it. So I've got this up on the screen and I took out some of the text to protect the innocent. There's a, a corporation there that's in this article. But this arrived on my doorstep just a few days ago uh, up in the shoe swap. Uh, cannabis facility gets mixed response and so when I look through here I see that uh, this company is building one of the largest medical cannabis operations in Western Canada and I didn't even know about it I'm, I'm, I'm in land use planning didn't even know about it and uh, apparently as you read through the article they've really done a lot of good homework they're, they're building a, it's a totally organic operation um, it's well financed they purchased good land for it um, They've even gone to NASA for technology to contain the smell. So it's supposed to be completely contained. Uh, they're going to recycle 85% of their water. Sounds like a great operation. But as you can see, uh, the public's wondering about it, and so is the Agricultural Land Reserve. And it, it occurred to me that this is often how, you know, I hope that they're really successful, but this is often how we we end up with business as usual in uh, British Columbia, but also in Canada in terms of land use. And, and what it can do is it can put a really good business opportunity at risk. So just relate back to another project. Uh, I don't know if any of you have gone through Salmon Arm, but we now have a smart centers um, shopping development there. But in 2012, Smart centers moved in, you know, with Walmart and all of that, and uh, they actually, behind the scenes, purchased land, uh, made a deal with the city, didn't tell anybody, approvals were put in place, they got permits, and they started building, and then people went, hey, what's going on? The land you're building in is the delta of the Salmon River, and it's surrounded by a bunch of indigenous land. It's uh, navigable waters under federal administration, and things started to slow down. So they, they started to go ahead, uh, but then as you can see in the paper, Smart Center's construction in limbo, there was, they didn't have the public buy-in, starting to manage the PR, trying to win over the public after the fact, wasn't working out. Then they got sued, and lo and behold, like we were talking about two years of planning, Rob mentioned two years of, of work, that's a small little amount of time. This thing was hung up for about four or five years and cost millions and millions of dollars in litigation just because at the beginning, all of the neighbors around this potential operation weren't brought into the process to develop it and, and become, you know, essentially owners in, in the development and, and benefactors. And that's what I want to talk about is that when, when you're, if you're thinking about developing a facility or an operation, you got to think holistically, you got to think about the watershed, you got to think about all of your neighbors and how you're impacting them, um, or else this can happen. 
And eventually, they, they got the permit, they got everything through, but they had to make concessions. They suffered major costs and, and now have spent the last five or six years trying to repair relationships. So the facility is way smaller than it should have been. That takes down the economics. And it just reminded me when I opened up my newspaper and, and these guys have a great plan. They built two buildings. Now the Agricultural Land Reserve has changed the rules. Used, they thought they would just build covered facilities and be like a barn full of cows making milk. But if you're going to do this on agricultural land reserve, you have to keep dirt on the floor. You can't put concrete in. And, that, and so their next eight buildings are in limbo. So what's that cost? What, what's that hidden cost um, to the developer, to the shareholders, to the potential workers, to who will benefit from the product? First off, it's really important to understand that the prohibition against promotion of cannabis is extremely broad. It, it, the, the, what, it, what the act does is it basically creates a blanket prohibition on promotion of cannabis, and it defines promotion extremely broadly. It's, at the second bullet there, promotion means a, rep <coughs> excuse me, a representation about the thing or service by any means, whether directly or indirectly, that is likely to influence and shape attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors about the thing or service. You know, you cannot associate cannabis with a way of life. You cannot promote cannabis in a way that there are reasonable grounds to believe is attractive to youth. Not sure how that's going to be interpreted, but the BC Act is also extremely problematic, uh, from my perspective, or at least it's very broad. So a person, again, it's a broad prohibition on people, must not promote cannabis for the purpose of, sorry, that's a spelling mistake, purposes of selling it and must not solicit, receive or take orders for the sale or purchase of cannabis. Promote is not defined, solicit is not defined in the statute. So there are exceptions for the government. They can do all these things. The government's employees can do these things. Federal producers um, can do these, can promote only in relation to the sale uh, to government. So governments talking to LPs are sort of exempted from this general prohibition. They can say whatever they want to each other, basically. Uh, and BC doesn't have jurisdiction outside of the province, and so that's why, you know, just they can't regulate the speech of an LP in BC in relation to, uh, to outside of the province, so some other business outside of the province. They're not regulating that. That will be the federal statute and the other provinces uh, statute if the speech is in the other province. Uh, and then there's the licensees and employees of licensees. So the licensee question is, is again problematic. I think everyone th has the impression that if you get a retail license, you can engage in promotion. I don't think that that's particularly clear uh, in the statute because there are two types of licenses. There's a retail license and then there's what's called a marketing license. It is prohibited in provincial law to advertise or promote any place in the province as a place to consume cannabis or, and I find this unusual, to spend time after consuming cannabis. <laughs> so you can't talk about that. No one can talk about that. That's very broad and highly restrictive of the speech. Um, there's also uh, prohibitions on entertainments and games and retail store, which is drawn from the liquor space, but is not clearly defined and uh, potentially overbroad. So that's the general summary of advertising law. Then there's the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. So many people know about free speech, but most who aren't lawyers are not as familiar about the protections under our, our charter for commercial speech. Commercial speech is a protected type of speech. Uh, so the section is, is 2B, right? We, everyone has the, the, the fundamental freedom to uh, of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including freedom of the press and other media of communication. So the Supreme Court of Canada has in several cases decided that commercial speech, i.e. speech about commercial activities, is more than just about economics and it is protected under section 2b of the charter because it, it, it deals and this is really important for cannabis because cannabis is really different here than all of the precedent cases that we've dealt with because this look at what the court has said a couple decades ago 
informed choice by individuals, self-fulfillment, personal autonomy. These are three of the fundamental pillars of the legalization of cannabis. And yet, as I will get into, the government has, the federal government has modeled its cannabis advertising laws off of the jurisprudence under this charter section dealing with tobacco advertising, which is a very different history. So first off is the right. And just for you non-lawyers out there in Canada, even if a right is infringed, the government is permitted to justify that right under section one of the charter, right? So the section there says, a government can basically impose a reasonable limit on that right that is prescribed by law as can be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. And the courts have set out tests for those things. Basically, the tests look at whether the government has a pressing and substantial purpose for restricting the right. So if speech is restricted, you pass, you, you're basically infringing section 2B. If the speech is protected and it's restricted, then usually section 2B is infringed. It's actually fairly easy to pass that part of the legal test. Then we get to the real battleground for free speech cases, and the first ground is, okay, if your government's gonna restrict speech, what's their purpose? Is it pressing and substantial? Then that's not enough. Is the law rationally connected to that purpose? So, um, in this, in the Cannabis Act situation, you know, the, the evidence of harm of cannabis is underdeveloped. As we know, it's far less convincing. Uh, we, one, we know that cannabis has medical benefits for some individuals. The, and we have a court decision that has protected the access to cannabis for medical users. There's nothing like that in the tobacco context, absolutely nothing. So that, that already changes the context for the Cannabis Act restrictions, speech restrictions, I would say, in, a, uh, in an, order, an order of magnitude. Eliminating the black market. What, is that, what does that mean exactly? And how is that going to be effectively achieved in a way that is fair and reasonable for, for the, you know, not everyone in the black market is the same, for example. On the other hand, a part, another part of my brain, the lawyer enforcement part goes, well, if there's leniency forever, then you're actually giving the legal producers who have spent all this money on developing, you know, complying with the licenses, developing their brands, you're, you're, you're just screwing them, basically, if you don't start enforcing these things. But where is that line? And, and how do you actually effectively roll in legalization and take out uh, black market while giving this fair process to those who may transition? Because I don't think that's clear. And I don't think that alcohol prohibition is a good example anymore because it's almost 100 years ago. So um, maybe we'll jump to burden it and just open it to whoever wants to say anything. British Columbia came out of prohibition in 1921. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And the government official that was in charge of uh, prohibition and surging the prohibition of the force was a gentleman by the name of Walter Finley. And he was arrested and charged with victim of the whole bit around 1920. Being, because he too was guilty of bootlegging. And uh, it's an interesting story that they came out of prohibition because of the of prohibition wasn't working. People wanted access to that product, uh, alcohol. There's no saying, there go the people, and I must get behind them and follow them, for I am their leader. And that's basically what happened out of prohibition. But coming forward now to cannabis, I'm a firm believer that people who've been in the cannabis business, who've been operating cannabis stores, should be allowed to get licensed. Uh, no question about it. How you get rid of the black market, you have to do it through careful screening of people, but I think the government's gone over. Um, we've got the black market, if you will, for gang, uh, gang members uh, involved in liquor still today. And when I can, I go down through Vancouver, I can point out a bunch of bars that I know that they're involved in one way or the other. They're either the landlord, their shareholder, there's a profit sharing agreement, the liquor branch never sees, whatever, but they're there, they're involved. And you'll never get rid of them totally in mean, cannabis, I don't believe. But I don't think it's fair to hold back people who are legitimate people who pay taxes, employing people who have been in the business. You guys are at NASA what, uh, or to uh, cannabis when NASA is the space. And you understand it. The government has been talking to you because they look upon you folks as living off the proceeds of crime. And to uh, keep the big picture in focus and decide that they wanted to have 
a sustainable community. And by that, they wanted to make sure that they didn't lose sight of the long-term viability of the city. Mics are hot. The hot. mics are hot. It's a hot and stormy night here. Mics the mics are hot. Are hot, hot, hot. So, um, yeah, that was some interesting stuff. I didn't actually get to hear all of it because we're in the studio, but... <laughs> we went and got you snacks. I was there. I saw it. <laughs> I saw generally what you were listening to. And, uh, yeah, I hope you got to hear all the stuff. I, we're going to upload... Um, we'll maybe upload we can clip out each... Uh, does do you have to record the whole entire thing? Yeah. Uh, it's in chunks, so it's like a website. It's looking over. It's like a or whatever. So right. Sneezed over something. <laughs> Heavy sneezing going um, on. But yeah, that was happy <laughs> on the <laughs> cam. <laughs> and yeah, so that was interesting. It's cool to see these people gathering and a lot of people that were saying the same things that we're saying. Um, obviously, there's some serious problems with the Cannabis Act and its constitutionality, especially oh. when it comes to free speech stuff. <laughs> Free weed stuff, too. And the, all the weed stuff, not to mention, um, there's some serious issues. Of course, the Cannabis Act <laughs> doesn't legalize all cannabis. It only legalizes government cannabis, <laughs> government-approved cannabis. And that means Ugh. other cannabis is still illicit cannabis. And that means that all the weed that's there now out there in BC and everywhere else is all illegal, illicit. And I think not, that makes it better. Like when you yeah. grow your own weed. Is that why, <laughs> is that why it's so much better? <laughs> well, people oh, put so care funny. into it. We're not, we're, the, people don't grow it for you know uh, making their stock prices go up. People grow it because they're attached to the plant and they are become good gardeners. Oh, they love it, right? <laughs> Look, he's floating like it's cookie with a goatee. <laughs> 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 you gotta take the glasses off. You got the glasses. Yeah, oh, that's pretty good. Oh, it's funny. <laughs> well, I'm saying when, when uh, the growers Look who's on pot TV. When, when, the, when the growers uh, don't love the plant, if they're they're growing it for a salary, and that alone, and and, and they don't have the sort of experience with. With gro that comes with growing marijuana for a long time. You can't just learn. It's it's not just a, it's not every plant, right? <laughs> nope. And uh, and and not just growing it, but curing it and you know packaging it. All, all handling that's important. it. Important. You know, well, the biggest problem with the Cannabis Act is it's a big fuck you to the medical users of cannabis. And cannabis is a medicinal herb, and you can't even use it without using it medicinally. Whether you're relaxing from a tough day or whatever it is you're using it for. And uh, the fact that there's no provision in the Cannabis Act to allow access for medical patients and that Ooh. most of the access that was there was through illegal dispensaries that are now being systematically Smoke shut man. down to protect this racket that the government's got going. This is a dark day for medical users still, and that's what our fight is really all about, mm -hmm. to end the stigmatization and uh, about cannabis and its benefits and to you know, allow proper access to people. Shit, you can buy cigarettes at every gas station from here to the other side of Canada, whether it's n close to an elementary school or not. And, and, and booze in some of them. And booze oh, yeah. in lots of things as well. So, totally. I mean, it's, it's a very hypocritical world. If it's not against yeah. our charter, it damn well should be, but I'm sure that it is. And, uh, you know, what they're doing in my mind is just sealing their fate in the future when history looks back mm -hmm. on, uh, you know, how this, this file was handled. Uh, our public servants and the greed and the corruption that's been involved in this file is, is just over the top. Mm -hmm. And I, I hope that it's used to, uh, to to put some checks and balances in place down the road for, for many other things that we have dealings with to do with our public servants. Yeah. Good call, Neil. Licensing in general. Absolutely. I mean, what are regulations all about? What are they What are they there for? They're there because some products have problems associated with their use, uh, you know, and, and, and when that arises, <laughs> there's a room for regulations. But the regulations need to meet the needs of what those harms and, and associated problems are. And, and when they go beyond that, and when regulations are, are so stringent, and especially in the case with something like drugs, then <coughs> you're going to have an underground black market for sure. The, the regulations have to fall short of a, of a supply that's under regulated that would be easier to access and cheaper for people and, and that's the route that they would go. So the mandate of regulators would be to have regulations that actually do solve issues that are real and don't go to the point where we can have an underground market, especially for the dangerous stuff. Cannabis thankfully isn't dangerous, nope. but for those things that are, to have them sold on the street corners, to have opioids being sold on street corners across this continent 
is absurd in the first place, but it's also mm -hmm. the root of all of this death and, and suffering that's happening by the, the tainted opioid supply that's yeah. on the street. Tainting everything, I heard, yeah. There was a thing the other day about Oxycontins or whatever. They I were, wouldn't think you could trust anything that's a powder if you're buying it no, on the street anymore. No, it was a press pill? Well, it's the same thing. That's a powder, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah, I saw Yeah, I guess you just press it into a pill. Yeah, uh, you press it into a pill. But I, I saw a figure that like, even, you know, most of the cocaine is actually fentanyl now, that you, if you buy it on the street. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that, but I saw that it had entered the cocaine realm, whereas yeah. it hadn't much before. Yeah. Uh, so and then there was another uh, fellow on CKNW the other day and yesterday, in fact, talking. He's an underground uh, a producer, a chemist. And he said, there's nothing anybody could do. You shouldn't even have the conversation about stemming the tide of these things. I mean, there's more addictive, more powerful, more deadly drugs coming onto the stream all the time. You cannot arrest your way out of any of this. And, and I, I know that Linda Steele was quite upset about it because the, the model that's being presented that makes sense if you want to actually reduce deaths, reduce harms, and all the rest of that, is stop trying to enforce a, a, a criminal law onto what is a medical issue and, and give people what they need, have it available to them for whatever it is they demand and those people that demand opioids should have it available to them the model being presented to Linda Steele was to have it on demand for free that we should be giving for free well I think if people can afford it then they should afford it if they can't like, afford it like Germany they or should have it for did, free yeah. but you know my comment to Linda was that you know not only should they have opioids available for free on demand if they can't afford it but they should have other alternatives like cannabis edibles as well which has a known efficacy in dealing with opioid <coughs> addiction and opioid withdrawal well, so, and even yeah, to exactly. like start going off that dose, you got to kind of downsize off, or else you're going to get super sick, like any other drug. And with the cannabis, that would actually probably help because you could downsize, but like take it so it's like that modulator that would give you like that extra effect that you're missing from not having that morphine or whatever it would be, you know? Absolutely. Like, uh, you know, at the Herb School, it was reported to us regularly by the people that were from that area using opioids and using cannabis, that if they had a couple of good, strong edibles and they were trying to withdraw, that would get them through the whole night without, you know, with the stuff that they were going through otherwise. And we know this now. The studies are in on that as well. Did you, Neil, so, did you mention the new study that just came out a couple days ago? The new one that study? showed, I think it's from, I can't remember which state, it's from Oregon maybe, that showed that um, in all the counties that had medical marijuana dispensaries of any kind, the opioid deaths went down by 8 to 10 percent. Yeah, that's been around for a while, though. Those yeah. numbers have been known for a while. And it, so. one, they just came out, another one just came out just a few days ago. Well, there's more and more looking yeah. into that because it is working. And so there's, there's actually quite a groundswell of uh, people interested and in studies coming on down the pike. Uh, as, as everybody knows, a pot TV yeah, probably, uh, you know, I run the cannabis lives. substitution pot Simple project. And for 22 months, we've been handing out cannabis edibles to people on the downtown east side with great success. Yeah. Uh, people, you know, come to me at the table and say, You're saving my life, you know, clean for a year, thanks to you guys. All these great comments that we're getting from these people. And UBC's on site every time, and they're, they're doing good. Uh, and in actuality, well. they're not actually receiving so much, you know what I mean, per week or per per visit. You yeah, know what I think I mean? that probably we're not giving them as much as they would require to get, you know, the a full-time daily dose of whatever is right for them. In but some cases, I know that them. we are because yeah. some people need less and we're be and that's being reported to us that all they're using is what they're getting from us. Nice. I mean, we're certainly there to supplement. I mean, these are people that have been getting street drugs from guys on the street corner and passing dollars for, for powders and stuff with those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, but they do face financial barriers. We, we certainly felt that the best way to address this crisis was to give it away, to yeah. make it as easy as possible for people to get. Yeah. You know, as you point out, we're not quite yet giving what people would require in, in not only in the amount that they get, but in the specific types that work for different people. Different people prefer yeah, I guess the indicators if you're, like, to the sativas, and some people prefer some the caps. Some way, caps and then you could, yeah, like actually Where we have just get, amount. we get donations of, ju of different, right? we got gummy suppliers, we got a cap supplier, we got some cookies and brownies, and everybody gets a pack that's got one of those things represented in it. Uh, our packs lately have been really good because our, our donators are a good solid core of people that that donate every single time in a large amounts nice. so that uh, we've really uh, done a, a good job I think of of passing it on to people a lot of cannabis uh, enough to maybe more than just supplement but to actually in some cases be all that they need but our, our desire I and our like goal that. was always to give them all that they need so more donations are of course necessary to, yeah, to yeah, reach yeah. that goal we're not there yet but I'm very proud of what we are giving people and it's twice a week so yeah I know, you know that's awesome yeah you know they get a nice pack with you know five or six edibles including a couple of packs of gum and then uh, three days later they're back getting some more as well so you know uh, 
yeah. and that's good. Then I don't have to really worry. Like, you know, it, it, no. the government's trying to fund all sorts of things to address the op- overdose crisis. But I mean, not this. They're like, this. Mm, no, you know, it's just pot edibles. You're like, well, pot's legal now. They're like, well, but edibles, you're like... Yeah. Well, we're, we're the, trying to prove look, that's there's what we're no doing. proof it's working. You're like, oh, all these people come every 22 week, months. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, for, yeah, we've got empirical evidence now. UBC is gathering that data. They're going to put yeah, a study true. based that's on awesome. what they're, they're gleaning from us as well. Yeah. So that's coming down the pike. And that is what we're saying is, is this is working. This should be one of the solutions. If you're going to have uh, free opioids on demand for people, you should certainly have free cannabis edibles on demand for people as well. And hopefully that's part of it. Yeah, I never understood it till I was like in the hospital and on like, you know, heavy morphine or whatever, and then like consumed cannabis and then went back in and they like re hooked me up. And then I was like, actually, heavy morphine? Heavy. Oh, heavy. Heavy. The cannabis was heady. heady. Yeah. The the cannabis was was heady and the the morphine morphine wasn't. But yeah, like, like, you could be, you were just hooked up to it all the time. And then, like, when they unhooked it and you went and smoked (laughs) and then came up and they re hooked it up, that's when you were like, got high off it, I guess. Or, well, cannabis is an amplifier of, of oh, the other it, drugs that it, it, it interacts with, for sure. And it was nice, um, though. You so have we're, even be, we're having those reports as well, that people are using less of, or they need to use less of whatever they're using to get to that desired state where their pain is at bay, whatever it is that they're looking for. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, damn it, it just works, and it works for lots of people in lots of ways, and, and it should be embraced, not discouraged, and we're still up against a lot of stigma with a government that wants to monopolize sales and not um, uh, normalize its use. Sure. So, oh, that yeah. stigma. Yeah, oh, that stigma. Been oh, around for a while, stigma. eh? And yeah. like, so undeserved. Cannabis is, smells sure. beautiful, but the people that use cannabis are beautiful too. And to That's have the, the, a bunch of dumb stoners that you know have no memory and uh, you know can't drive and it's de- yeah, y- you're brain damaged. A fallacy. So many horrible yeah. fallacies, you know. Brain damage, but in oh. meanwhile the VPD can smoke weed as long as they're fit for duty. So yeah, yeah and other police be. forces. Well, no, they're the talking thing. about the, the developing brain. That, My brain know, damage w- never w- stopped yeah. me from driving, and I'm yeah. for it. But <laughs> and, and it's such bullshit that you damage the developing brain. If that was the case, there's millions of brain damaged Canadians uh, from using cannabis extensively in their youth. That'd be proof. And s- yeah, I, I, I know plenty of people who are, you know, extremely high functioning ind- individuals who smoke weed every day, you know, and have for a long time and did when they were teenagers too. So, you know, it, maybe it's not for everybody, but to, you know, say it's terrible, you know, it's... While it's sipping a, on your brandy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. and, and to say we're taking a pharmaceutical for the developing brain and your brain only develops till you're 25 like I did a, my, I think my brain kept growing and developing after I was 25 I oh, hope so anyway so Mine you know. is still my brain is developing yeah, yeah. some real adverse not, effects of these people telling me I'm brain damaged <laughs> 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 well it's a hate crime it's an absolute mm-hmm. hate crime that if you're a, you were a young person using weed, now your brain's damaged. That's what the doctors are trying to say. They're calling you I mean, disabled. It's a, it's a hate crime. You're like, what? I don't know if it's a hate crime, but... Well, I think it is. It, it sure feels like it to me. Because <laughs> we, in Surrey, you know, we have crime. reputations for things, and we try to maintain that. Or wherever you're from, you try to maintain your reputation. We in smoked Surrey. a lot of weed in, in right. Surrey growing up, man, I'll tell you. And we made it into oil all the time. My friend Troil... You know, one of the main oil makers back in the day. Troil, I he had, his name. Not like, was, come on. Not, not only was Troil, Troil awesome at making oil, but at delivering it. I mean, he would have these gravity bongs. I mean, you go to Troil's place, man. Holy shit, you're going to have your head as blasted off as you could. Except we all came out of it as high-functioning people. Troil, Troy this day is a family man that is managing his life better than most people I know that never went through any of that. Yeah. So Good old trial. So brain damage, I don't think you can possibly damage your brain on cannabis. You can knock yourself out. But, you know, this this cop that's so upset, he's imagining, oh, my God, these children getting into edibles. I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine. You know, can you imagine them getting into underneath this kitchen sink or into the garage Shit, and into cleaning? Sh- because that's happening all the time. Or even into the alcohol of the parents or the pharmaceuticals of the parents. Mm-hmm. And those kids are messed up. And there are poster children for my kid was poisoned because they got into my pharmaceuticals or my alcohol or under my sink. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, he needs yes, to really yeah. reimagine what it is that he's imagining about what cannabis edibles does to people. People are worried about the chaos of legalization and we're going to have stoned drivers driving on the sidewalks and there's going to be stoned people coming to work and stoned this and stoned that. What they don't understand is most of the people they interact with all day long would be those stoned people because most people are using cannabis and it doesn't
doesn't make you stoned or stupid or anything like that. It makes you a little bit nicer. It makes you a little more compassion. It doesn't make you stoned? Stoner. No, it doesn't make you stupid. Oh. You know, it, it doesn't make you like you're... I mean, but, but stoned, you see, stoned... Smoking that fucking yeah. You know what stoned is, and, and, it's, and it's funny, and it, everything's good, but you're not like, I'm really duh. Right? Well, I'm kind of like that right now. <laughs> would you get in your car and drive? You're a responsible human being. Right now, would you get in your car and drive? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Because stoned is not I mean, crazy. I might wait a few minutes, to be honest. Not necessarily Actually, just sit and chill, Quite you know. frankly, right now, I'm really high. Okay, so you're I higher probably, than normal. But I probably would not drive my car. I would probably okay. wait for 10 to 20 minutes, eat my Twinkie, <laughs> and uh, chill out. 10, 20 minutes, okay. I, yeah. I have so been too stoned. some stone. water. Oh, you can be too stoned. Uh, yeah. and, and, yeah. But, but I knew really it. Though. You know, I, I, I was too stoned. I'm like... R- driving is just Too completely tiny. out of Too the question, yeah. you know. That's your rap name but I think now. the yeah. public is talking stone. about the average person that they're now going to meet on the street that's going to be somehow stoned, whereas <laughs> they're they're no different than they were the day before because they're just like, hey, stoned as the they were the day there, before. <laughs> you know, you're just staring at the green light there, stoner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to move or what? Just cross, the, cross the street there, man. Are you stoned? <laughs> Put down the Dorito. <laughs> and it's just you two know, bags of chips, bro. Come on. <laughs> when you when you Apple encounter somebody barbecue. and they're having a good day, they're enjoying the, the sunset that's going on or they're having an ice cream cone or whatever it is and they're they're just kind of in a good mood. Well, they're either in that good mood because they use some cannabis or because they're mimicking what cannabis kind of does for us. Because when you're having cannabis, the ice cream tastes a little better and the sun sets a little nicer. But you're not all gaga eyed, you know, like what the, I don't even know what that is that people think that it is, but it isn't what really is. Well, it's like because what really is is just about everybody. I like in to a good say mood. that it's a cross between drunk and what other people think, like straight people would think high is like. Because lots of people have been drunk to a point where they've been like out of control yeah. and been like, fuck, man, I was really like out of control. Where they have never been high, but they assume that it's like that because prohibitions just told them, like, oh, it's fucking worse than heroin, or it's the same as heroin, and they're like, booze must be better because everyone's all over the place. And then they have this weird cross, you know? And I'm like, no, like, weed's like nothing. You could be like super stoned, and like, if I drank like a six pack and we filmed it, I'd be fucking annihilated. But it's like, (laughs) you know, like, we should do that that as an experiment. I'm willing to do that one last time. (laughs) It's been done before. It's been like, what, (laughs) 10 years or something since I drank. So, you really? At all? At all, yeah. No well, I had a sip of moonshine last year well, on my probably birthday. We do it. <laughs> oh, no. It's, I'm not, like, addicted to drinking anymore. No. Well. It was wow. just never good. I always had bad stomach issues. So, like, making myself have, like, the flu-type symptoms the next mm-hmm. day and a headache was just, like, no, I get them normally anyway. So, I was like, fuck that shit. Weed was always nice. Huh. Well. We and I always mm-hmm. worked and stuff. So, I used that to work, like, in the day or something. So, I realized, like, if you don't drink at night... It's pretty easy to do that whole twelve-hour shift the next day, you know. Yeah. Where if you drink, you're just fucking dreading like, oh, oh it's noon, dead. man. I still gotta go like <laughs> six more hours. I don't know. Death. Death. Yeah. Death. And yeah. that's just like punishment for your body, and you know. It is. No, I can't drink that hard. And even when I do drink a little bit, like if I have one or two beers, I get a headache. It's crazy. Yeah. And I used to make a lot of oil back in the day, so alcohol extraction so smelling that alcohol everything just tastes fucking weird like you know i did it incorrectly you know non not so vented places and all this stuff you know like i do love beer though like i love a good idea. try it warm no, warm is not so good warm in the sun <laughs> i love beer Under but beer doesn't seat. love me no exactly yeah, i i do love beer that's a good way to say it yeah yeah no it yeah. doesn't love me either it doesn't love me at all. Oh, I, I don't mind the drunk feeling. Like, I've tried some recreational drugs in the past that have gave me that same feeling and have been like, well, I like that part about it, but everything else, no. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, the high is good, but it's just the painful afterwards that's bad. Yeah, most times it's like a crapshoot. It's not like, okay, it's not if I only drink, you know, two drinks or three drinks or whatever, eight drinks, whatever it is. You don't know in the morning if you're going to wake up and be, like, hung over, you know? Like, sometimes you just go, I used to go and just have, like, one drink and wake up and be like, shit, I should have just had, like, 20 drinks. I feel worse, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> but yeah. then sometimes have, like, 20 drinks and feel fine. But That's very true. It's and there's never, like, yeah, it was never the same, even though if I drank the same thing, you know? Yeah. But 
I pretty consistently though, if like, it's funny, if I drink one beer and then stop drinking beer, like say I have a beer in the afternoon or two, a couple of beers for lunch or something, by like four thirty, five o'clock, I'll have a headache. But yeah. if I was to just keep drinking, like if I if it we goes went out, away. yeah, if you dr- if I drank all night, like straight through, then I'm fine. I don't get that till the next day. Till the next day. <laughs> yeah, but if you keep going, that's true. Yeah, no, I yeah. I agree. It was the same thing for so, me. I'd have just a couple of beer. That's what I took from this. I got just got to keep drinking as soon as I start. Keep yeah. drinking. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, yeah, hey, uh, before I go, uh, you know, we're talking a little bit of the, the, the bad day for medical users and lack of access and stuff. So access. what we need to have is dispensaries open that are for medical purposes. And that's the fight that's between the courts right now. We're waiting for a judgment on that as to whether we're going to be allowed to have a store that people can go into or not. But um, there's something else that looks like it's going to be able to be possible, and that's that because this this war that's being fought right now is municipality by municipality. Every municipality gets to decide on whatever rules they want and what they do and don't want to allow within certain parameters. And uh, it looks like there's an ability for municipalities to alter the wording of the uh, the standard uh, form like for Kimberly for there. licensing dispensaries. And to allow for medical dispensaries within their communities, um, and and there's a dispensary that we're going to talk to. I guess probably by the next show we'll have some. He didn't get an answer back yet about that, though. Yeah, it, it's all in the works. He says he's got it going, but you know, I would I'd like to talk to him in a week and week from now because on Monday he's going to go in and, and hopefully get this license that's going to be stamped by the provincial government as valid. Uh, in the meantime, he's continuing to operate as a medical dispensary within his, his community with the blessings of their city council and, and, a, and a business license in place from them. But, uh, you know, stay tuned for this because if there's a way to do this where a municipality can just alter the wording in the licensing document and allow for medical rather than non-medical dispensing of cannabis, then, uh, you know, that'll help pave the way for, for getting better access for sure. As much as I want to Wave believe that that's tr- going to be something that's true, I find that very hard to believe. And that's why we're going to stay on top of it and get back next week to find yeah. out what happened with that. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't doubt that he submitted his forms by crossing them out, but... He, I, it sounded like he said they have not been verified. He's supposed to pick them up on Monday, he said, and he hasn't got them yet, and so he you know, can't say for sure until they're in their hand, hopefully. Well, until he um, gets an answer back that says you're approved, then I'd say that that's not... But, it, you know, in the meantime, it's a possible tact that uh, people can use within their city councils and their municipalities if their municipalities are willing to have medical dispensaries. And that hopefully they all, you know, get up to speed on understanding that that's the void that, that exists now. I'm not sure I would advise people to do that quite yet because the issue is... Hold the pay, boat. You pay $7,000 to get your application in, right? So if you're trying to pass, I'm not sure that crossing out the word non-medical and leaving it medical is going to, they're not going to, I mean, I just have a Sign hard time. We'll, capitals, we'll see. Bro. Yeah. I and mean, then it comes down, and it also comes down to enforcement, and a lot of that is dictated to some degree by the municipalities, and, and there are dispensaries that are operating illegal still today are, with, yeah, with no. the blessings of them, at least being oh, condoned yeah, yeah, where they are. It's yeah, the we, city for so, sure. The yeah. city 100%. Yeah, well, that's what I mean by municipality. Province. That's what I mean by yeah. municipality. Province it's just, a little bigger. Province, no, oh, yeah, no, province like, is a different animal. But, you know, John Horgan <laughs> promised me that, you know, when, when it finally came down to it, he was going to lead the charge for, uh, for medical access and for access to cannabis. Like Haven't seen that yet. Answer. So, yeah. but you know, we'll try to hold them to it, and and to, to me, this is not this is not the end of prohibition, as we all know, it's not the end of prohibition, but it's also not the end of legalization. In fact, this is the beginning of legalization, and from yeah. here, you know, the fighting I think is a lot easier than it was before we even had this footing to stand on. So I am optimistic about the future, although ver- still very unhappy about these unreasonable laws, unjustified uh, penalties that are you know, on the books still, and then being enforced across Canada to some degree. We'll find out in a little while how well enforced those things are, and, uh, and that'll be a big reasonable. key, too. No. no, the rules aren't reasonable so far. No, all it's they, ridiculous. All they had to do, they, they, they did not have to make a whole bunch of new rules. They could have okay, good. legalized marijuana across the board by simply changing one of the old rules by taking cannabis off of the controlled substances list. Yeah. CDSA. And just leaving it off of that, and then all the cannabis laws would become irrelevant instantly. Yep. yep. So that's all they had to do. It wouldn't have cost them a dime, and or a quarter. the There's existing so industry could now, be refined, yeah, sure. you know, and, and uh, they we could... could have, yeah, they could have easily just decriminalized in a whole bunch of different ways, rather yeah. than trying to, like, force us into this new system with a gun to our heads, and 
all of the products and everything that we've all been spending all this time working on is still illegal. But it's funny how it's legal for them and you're legal to have their cannabis and they've got this sort of monopoly figured out. Yeah. It's not just a coincidence. It is actually a conspiracy. They don't want to give us the legalization that you're talking about or no. that we want or need. No. They want to give us a legalization that allows all the, the profiteers of prohibition to continue to profit and now they get to sell us weed too. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, and uh, you, you see, there's a new dispensary chain that's just opened that's operated by former RCMP officers. And it's the, they're like, yeah, we're open it for a new day. And yeah, weed's good now. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, Not. they're just selling us back all the stuff <laughs> that they confiscated. Yeah, exactly. that's why it's so shitty. It's Gives like them a ten years up. old, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they tumbled it, and it's so like we're gonna just clear been sitting in plastic lockers. bags for ten years. Yeah. I wouldn't even doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it either. Well, I mean, what are they doing with it all? Would they evidence really? locker? We'd, at least it would be good. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's We'd be like the, shit. This, this is no shit. To say the least, the opportunity for that type of corruption is is so rampant and so there and available. <laughs> you know, just like licensed producers or people that want to be licensed producers, they're all producing until they're licensed producers. Because why wouldn't you? You know, test, research, and development. What happens to all that weed? You know, or just burn it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah just destroy it. I'll be a town. test subject. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just they dump it in kitty litter and then they yeah. burn it. We that's test what they're supposed to do. Kitty litter. <laughs> <laughs> that one always seems so weird. I'm like, why kitty litter? I'm going to give you 20 bucks to take this big box of beautiful weed out and like get rid of it, okay? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I said like put dirt on it. Like, yeah. Name. Bury it a little like, bit. No, no, <laughs> dirt's no good. It's, it's growing in dirt. You could just take the dirt you grew it in and fucking oh, dump man. it on top and be like, we're done. Mm -hmm. You ever tried to smoke weed that got dirt on it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> At least comedians yeah. still have lots to make fun of with Tastes this new like system, Harris. that's for sure. <laughs> hey, I got to run. I got to do another interview. In You're doing a marathon minutes. or something? BC uh, Bud Depot wants to talk to me. They oh, got a, nice. They got a new Camel podcast. The boys. Don't trip. Yeah, they got a nice run. new studio set up. It looks beautiful. And uh, they're, they start, this is the, uh, BC Bud Depot. Oh. Camel and the yep. boys. Oh, cool. Camel and the boys, yep. Nice. So uh, I'm the, they had Remo uh, and Sandra on last week as their first guests, cool. and I'm on tonight. So. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, Here we got Neil Magnus in here. That's hard on my Hang throat. on to your seats, boys. <laughs> Hang on to your seats. I'm coming. That's awesome. That's very, very So, yeah, cool. thanks for having so me here people, again, as always. Where do we listen and, to that? People, yeah, can, where do you find it online? BCBuddepot.com. Uh, yeah, you know, the master Google can find you anything, probably. I haven't got all that contact information Or right Alexia. Now. Get that info. I'll have it for you next Friday. There you go. Along with the, some more ins and outs of whether or not you can or cannot have a medical dispensary. Is that live? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a yes. podcast. I'm not sure if it's uh, broadcast live and then uh, podcast? available mm -hmm. or not. Could so. be both, I guess. Could be both, yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it out. Now, I'll be live either way. pre recorded yeah, and Anytime you see me anywhere, I'm live. So. Neil is alive. <laughs> live and alive. Yes, he's alive. I'm alive. Five alive. <laughs> Take advantage Johnny of that as long alive. as it lasts. It's true. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, it's a right, good thing. Neil. All right, Neil. All right. Enjoy your evening. Yeah. And you know what? We're actually probably going to wrap this show up. Because wrap it up like a joint. I have to do my parking. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's expired, and I don't. my phone is dead, so it's not going to be done. And I don't have any coins on me. Neil could go right now for you. Neil could. Right. How many yeah, coins do you need? Go. The thing is, we, I didn't really have anything else to do on the show today, and it's already oh. 6 o'clock, so... So we're good. Yeah, I don't have yeah, anything else yeah, to yeah. do. That's yeah. a good long All right, guys. Okay. Well, thanks for watching Pod TV. That was <laughs> it was a great show. Great show. And we'll be back again next Friday for sure. Um, I'm trying to think of what is happening next Friday. Isn't there something going on? Is the yeah, Lyft okay, Expo? O cannabis, but it lift is coming. Mm. Uh, j j uh, d d d d is that in January? They had the award ceremony last night. That's people in January. Won. Oh yeah, right. Uh -huh. Events happen. People we're going to talk about. Yeah, guess who won the lifetime achievement award? Bruce Linton from <laughs> <Canada>. <laughs> what? For what? He won he the lifetime the first achievement in award. In so when was this? Can you believe this no. shit? Lift. Oh man, it's just so sad. And I don't, I'm not sure what it, there's a, apparently there's a whole bunch of controversies around who won their things because some of them are just like not, they're like a podcast. There was the one who, the guy who won, won like podcast influence or something, like has one episode uploaded or something, but oh, works. Looks like it's probably a good one then. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> we should do a review on yeah, it maybe and give our honest opinion. I'm just, <laughs> that was just told to me 
by that was passed on to me by Carly Marley, actually. So she knows. She knows what's going on. She watches these things a little more closely than I do. But um, yeah, there's some. Th- I definitely know that Bruce Linton got the Lifetime Achievement Award, though. Like a pay-to-play type thing or whatever. I don't know what that's yeah, all about. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know how that works. But I, yeah, I think something. it's like sponsored by a bunch of them. I think yeah, Lyft works with the LPs, but yeah. I don't know if they're owned by one or anything like that. And, um, mm-hmm. I know they work with them, but yeah. <laughs> so not allowed to advertise, but putting Man. on shows is a good thing, maybe. <laughs> yeah, good way to. But skirt. Bruce Linton, I I don't know. If, <laughs> How he could have a lifetime achievement award for fucking what is he, he did it, man. He's weed guy. He's already yeah accomplished. Bruce Linton, weed guy, been in the business for like what? Two years. Two years, man. He's fucking <laughs> I don't know, hardcore. No, three, maybe three, four at the very most. Lifetime. Yeah, lifetime. He's worked a lifetime, toiled away. Huh. I wonder if he sold any black market weed ever. Yeah, that's where it's at sometimes. I'd like him better then, but I guess nah. 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 No, I'm not a, not a huge fan of the old Canopy crew. Um, but, you know, I'm in the spirit of... I actually think that they, they did do a good thing and give that money to the university to do research and stuff. Yes. But they're calling it the Canopy oh, Professor of it's whatever. It's sick. It's yeah, sick. The and they're, yeah. It's all got the Canopy's name all over it. Yeah, because so they're they not allowed to advertise, so they got to do everything they can to get their name out there. Yeah, and yeah, they're, re- they're exactly. researching genetic engineering too. So, yeah. Savage. That's good yeah. and bad, I guess. Well, GMO cannabis. Don't, we don't have to go there. We, we can get plenty of variety of strains just by selective breeding. We don't have to. Oh, yeah. There's a we 10, don't have to go GMO. I believe there's probably more strains out there now than there is tulips, but I don't want to say on the number of tulips, so I don't want to say that. Yeah. Don't That'd quote be, me on that, anyone. Yeah, we should. Unless it's true, and then quote me on it. <laughs> it's probably similar, you know. It says neck and neck. Cause yeah, they always <laughs> make like marijuana strains all every day. It's like, oh, but he's like, just made this strain, just made that. And you're like, oh wow. Well, yeah, we got a lot of work to do, and mm-hmm. I hope that we our lovely plant isn't overtaken by corporations who want to exploit it and do bad things to it. We've got to keep protecting it. And see, that's the job. Everybody's going to be like, oh, what do you have to do? What are you going to do after legalization? Be like, we're going to be building. like Stony the Snowman here if it's I like, can. No, Stoney after legalization, we still have to protect this plant. Because if not, people are going to try to exploit it and treat it like shit and do bad things to it and take it away from people. The good protect stuff. Protect it. People, yeah. So. Mm-hmm. That we need to protect. Stony the Snowman. Stony the Snowman. Stony the Snowman. Stony here. The snowman. Mm-hmm. I love it. His eyes are as red as snow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> red as a, yeah, he look I can't believe how red those eyes really are. So he looks like he's on acid and stoned. He's like, I'm fucking tripping, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's high. All right, guys. So tune in all week long on Pod.TV, glorious shows, live shows all week long. And on Pod.TV, all kinds of shows that aren't live, clips and aggregated content and all kinds of other goodies and stuff by Mr. Anil right over here. Right over there. Uh, on iTunes. Uh, iTunes. Available on iTunes. You can listen to them while you're driving, yeah, available doing whatever. On iTunes. Doing your homework, housework. iTunes. 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 Make no, it iTunes. your laundry folding station. And Twitch. And Twitch. We oh. Pod. Pod. TV, TV on Twitch. Twitch. We're gonna start looking. Twitching. At Twitch. yeah. We're gonna start twitching now, more than usual. All right. Mr. Stony, what'd you say? Oh, he says, "Have a good weekend, everyone. We'll see you all next week." Peace, Pod TV. Yeah, we love you all. Peace Drug out. Peace. Brought to you by SunWest Genetics.